<laughs> it's like when you're when you're in stealth mode. This is just completely completely invisible. Um, virtues handed to him. Hey there. We aren't shadows. We are the virtues. You're the virtues. There are lots of virtues. That's we were a bomb. <laughs> we were talking about we were talking about this. This if we had four hundred virtues, we were talking about this this afternoon. By the time you get to four hundred, it's it's the virtue of not too bad. Yeah, if they all had to be different, <laughs> the it would be they all have to be different. The virtue of a solid breakfast, reasonably nice. The virtue of a good night's sleep, <laughs> uh, which. Um, Birmingham, oh man, Rob Griffith says, Birmingham screwdrivers, hey, I resemble that remark. Uh, it's what, what the, uh, yes, the, uh, he used to use a hammer to mend some of the PCs and that's what he referred to it as. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I thought you meant something far, far worse then. Well, no, no, no. right over that. No, 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 he's, um, uh, uh, no, he wasn't. I thought it was like a Glasgow kiss that you were describing. No, 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 it was a genuine, a genuine um, implement used by tech support many years ago to fix errant PCs. I am the worst at fixing it. I love fixing PCs. I've had the same PC for like 12 years and I, I've been continuing upgrading it, but I'm the most static person ever, ever. I just touch anything and it's just zap every single time. So I have to like I you constantly- you just stood still a lot. <laughs> that would make a lot of sense actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll give everyone a little more time to jump in. We've got 415. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I will say we've got a bunch of questions starting to come through, so thank you for those guys. I can see people them. need to post them in the Q and A yeah. rather than the chat. The Q and A would be great doing? because right now because it's easier to the chat yeah. just go. If you can do it in the Q and A, it's fantastic, guys. Because right now my chat is being a little squiffy. It doesn't look like it's kind of feeding through quite properly. That's like my Facebook page. Picture. Just just static, just yeah. just, just grey outline just, and nothing yeah, else. Yeah, it's just an outline. Yeah. Um, so the question is really, has the update gone out with the rules? It has, looks like has it the has. Update gone out? I lost track. We had all the social stuff today. Yes, as well. the, we social the social stuff. stuff kind of, it kind of took over. Um, so we've got the the social stretch goals have been smashed, and the update is out for it. So <laughs> thumbs up. I can't believe it. Like I was completely I told completely you. Just Our guys, these guys, like I told you that they would just gobble it up. It was last um, second. Yeah, because the stretch goals obviously wanted to have something to get the kind of ball rolling and everything going nice, nice and well, and then a little bit of a step up, slightly bigger gap for the second one to create a little bit of some a target. You guys actually had to work, nom. like no Just, problem. Yeah, by, the by the time I had put the post out and got all the wallpapers together, which big shout out to Arnold, one of our graphic designers who helped with those today, he was epic. And by the time I got all those together and was about to put them on the website, mythicgames.net, to share with everybody, we'd smashed through the first four. I was like. I can't, I, I literally could not give up. Michael's saying, give us a rule book. So what is happening with the rule book? The update should be up momentarily, well, guys. I, I've, seen, I've seen the link to it. It's, um, when, I, when I saw it, there was a Dropbox file and he uh, made comments. Uh, <laughs> Leo has just said, rules update to be published in three minutes. That was six minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So there should be a rules so update. So in minus three minutes. Literally, uh, I got the update. Rules are live. Okay. There we go. Excellent. Um, is this a Leonidas Vesperini imposture? Leonidas Vesperini? Is that a Leonidas Vesperini imposture? I don't know. Uh, did I just hear as say three minutes? Woohoo. Yes, you did, but it is live. Let's have a quick check. Hey, hey, Nanny Nanas. Welcome, welcome. Leo sends me a message to say it is done. It is done. It is done. It is up, which is great. An ancient book of lore. So, I'm sorry, I do apologize, guys, we didn't have that to you sooner today. I think the social stretch goals kind of took over a bit. And we literally, the more of us looked at the rubric, I think the more of us were adding little bits, kind of tweaking everything and making sure it was, it was just right. For anybody that wants to know, we will be aiming to get the French um, version of the rubric out very shortly, shortly as well. We're aiming for tomorrow. Um, sometimes things have to wiggle a little, just depending on that what's might happening. Be in three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> a French three minutes. So we also have something else going on tomorrow. We do. Do you want to say? I mean, I'm I've teased it a little already. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have another add-on coming out tomorrow. That is kind of special because it's a couple of things that's interesting about it. One of them is that it's actually the only one of the larger add-ons that isn't based on um, Howard's original stuff because we ran out. Um, there's, there's a the only was so much. Yeah. The, the, well, there's there's only there's only so many stories, and um, and we've we've kind of used nearly all of them. We used all the ones we could we could work with. We finished off all the fragments we could, and then they're we guessing, we um, still wanted still wanted something else. So we ended up. Am I allowed to tell them? Yeah, you can. Go on. Okay. Well, we, we've done 
One more uh, add-on the size of, of uh, Heart of Africa and uh, Against the Vampires, and it is New World? The New I think World. it's called The it's New World. The New World. Yes, and then Anna's knows. We, we spo we've been teasing this a little bit. I think I, Leo spoiled a mini on his live stream. I spoiled the back you of one of the minis in the comments. If you don't want these guys to guess like that, yeah. you've got to be beyond subtle. Um, you, you should wear a white shirt, black on black. The video doesn't like this. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Solomon Cain black backdrop's not the best. Obviously, now with this Kickstarter versus Joan of Arc, we have two studios, we have, we have multiple cameras here. We have Absolutely. Obviously, Leo's new camera. So we're working to improve this kind of stuff. We'll be improving in the future as well. Or, um, or we could get inverted, inver like white, no, white white tops oh, with, with black, black logos. Games? Yeah, black logos. I don't logo. know. White's so hard. I'm a bit of a messy eater. I'm a bit of a spaghetti, <laughs> spaghetti bolognese guy, you know? <laughs> I'm not sure if white's really my color. Okay. Um, yeah, Leo's new camera, if you haven't noticed, I don't know if that's a joke. Are you trolling me, Nani Nanas? Because if you saw his webcam during Time of Legends, John of Arc, and you look at the quality of the camera now, Absolutely. It's shocking. It's, it's, Jeez, just, man, it's, it's shocking. just completely yeah. different. We see every wink he has lost through the campaign through lack of sleep. <laughs> he didn't know no trolling. So we're going to be focusing this chat primarily on the rules, but to talk about America a little bit more. Sure. There is, Leo spoiled way back, like five, six days ago, seems like a long time ago now, that there will be a big Gribbly. I'm curious to see what you guys all think the big Gribbly will be. A couple of big Gribblies, actually. There's more than one big Gribbly in it. But a, a there, are, there are certainly Gribblies in it, yes. Yep. I'm curious to see what you guys think the Gribblies would be when you're hitting America, 16th, 17th century. What would you have popped in the game? Because I really like what we've done. I think it's absolutely outstanding. I think one, interesting, one of, the, one of the things that you could consider Gribbly is actually not enormous in terms of miniature, mm -hmm. but boy, is he Gribbly. Yeah. <laughs> That is, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good way of putting it, actually. Well, you know what it is, it's Yeah, funny, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you don't know what it is, You're that's probably not quite as funny. It will be funnier tomorrow when you know what it is. <laughs> um, so if you guys have any questions about the rules, we're going to be focusing primarily on the rules of Eject tonight. Well, we can talk about anything. We can, well, yeah. Um, we're all friends here, we can talk of, about A couple of guesses coming in. Uh, Wendigo, so <laughs> Gabriel wants more social stretch goals. A Wendigo with an orange face and a blonde wig. You mean that looks like me? <laughs> from? <laughs> What's that from? Trump. Trump? Orange. <gasps> Please. Marcel, Marcel, you bad, bad, bad person. You terrible, terrible person. A <laughs> I'll, skinwalker. I'll, I'll have a word with the sculptors. To see if we can do a, a <laughs> That would make quite the stretch goal. But we'll uh, just do the wig. We'll just set the wig on stretch top. Goal. Just for the wig. Just a social on stretch goal. Yeah. And then we need a sandwich for the hand. Uh, Only little hands there. <laughs> Benjamin wants a Solomon Cain Thanksgiving box. Uh, alligators. Uh, says hello Terry. Um, yeah, so I want to come back to the stretch goals for a second because you guys just blew out of the water. So just for anyone that doesn't know, um, we did Instagram, we did Facebook, and we did uh, BGG. BGG, and we also did Discord, the Discord server as well, which was the first to achieve both of its stretch goals. It was unbelievable. So thanks to that, there are now six versions of each digital wallpaper of the four arts that you can go to mythicgames.net and download. And the six versions are. Cool. Six resolutions. Are they just resolutions? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Nineteen twenty by ten. So, so some of them, are, some of them, are, some of them are sort of for phones. Yes. Yeah, so some, some of them were square, some are rectangular, some of them tall. I have heard your requests in the comments. Unfortunately, time, of course, is a thing we have to work with, and we had so much to do today. And um, I have heard the request for super high res for widescreen dual monitor or fancy Mac users, and I've also Yay. heard the request. <laughs> <laughs> so work, so work, Mac. Uh, and I've also heard the request for um, high res phone ones. I've heard, noted, leave it with me. Um, the other thing then is that every single core box, thanks to all the work you guys did today, will now be getting four A3 art prints. And the question came up in the comments, will they be folded or rolled or whatever? Nope, they will fit right on top of your box, perfectly to within a millimeter. We measured we, it before we, we said. We asked many times about yeah. this. Talk about the, the box size, the outside of the box, the inside of the box, yeah, <laughs> what's a true box measurement? Because those, those millimeters matter. Uh, oh, all my comments just caught up and it went. Mm. Um, um, we were talking to people who only existed 20 yeah. minutes ago. Um, yes, it, my <laughs> comments just sped up and caught up, guys. Sorry about that. Um, so, yes, again, if you have any questions, demonic turkey for an American. Demonic turkey? For an American group. Wow. Wow. Um, or a Thanksgiving box. Just a, you want a Thanksgiving setting? Like a Pandora's box. <laughs> <laughs> that crossover would be pretty when you pretty when you open the box all the turkeys in the world come out <laughs> <laughs> and in the bottom there's just a wishbone 
Um, and yes, the other thing, of course, is the Leo Town Crier, and calling him the spoiler of the spoiler, um, he will now be added to every the single spoiler. core box. Yeah, it's, I think it's so perfect. The length of the scroll, as it kind of rattles on the floor, just kind of tells you that Leo's not a, he's not a one foot scroll, he's a 20 foot scroll guy. Yes. All and the spoilers. As, as many when? I don't know. I don't. I don't think uh, mini is what will happen for us. It'll be a. It'll be a barrel. I think as we've discussed, it'll probably be barrels. <laughs> um, so ask your questions in the chat, guys. Um, Alchemy's asking what story Ooh. is Mini Leo in. Leave that one with us. It's something Q we're chatting Q about. And a, Q and A is what they should be asking them. Yeah, we have uh, oh, a few questions have? in there already. We only have a few. Okay. Um, very some very specific questions in here. I might need Leo to help with the chat in a second. Let's see. Hi from Austria. Robert, stick your question in the, in the chat. I'll, I'll answer yours now. If anybody has any questions, stick them in the Q&A uh, up there. Um, hi from Austria. So nice to get the Prince A3 frames with fit to frame and hang them on the wall. Yes, they absolutely will. We're going to keep them to a standard size. That was one of the things we considered to ensure that you can go out and get a frame anywhere. Ikea is my personal choice, I must admit. Um, Amazon, you, know, you choose your fancy. Um, could Leo's scroll have spoilers written on it? I don't think that's a could, Rob. It definitely does have many, many, many spoilers written on it. Um, no way around that one. I'll be curious to see what people do with painting that. Will they, what would they put I, on I Leo's? Just, as soon as I saw it, I, went, I thought kind of red and gold. Red and gold. Because oh, I'm thinking of, 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 of the, the, the oh, tabard. Yeah. Because I was thinking, I was thinking the, uh, um, sort of the English heralds, English royal yeah. heralds. Obviously, he's French, though, so it should be blue and fleur-de-lis. I, I must admit the, the the garb he's in the kind of the, the patterns and iconography has is very English looking. So I was gonna I was gonna make him very English just to stick 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 Rub that in a bit, just, yeah. just to stick that Rub in, that in a little. Um, my comments I do apologize guys my comments are absolutely playing up my stream is not having fun. Let me get this. I don't want to refresh this in case I lose all your questions. Oh, does it do that? I don't think it does, but I'm conscious I don't want to lose everything that everybody is currently asking. No 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 no. I'm going to say it's the, the, the hex of not having something to spoil. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the curse. It's what, it's what I get, guys. It's the bad karma for not giving you, for not what, you what you want every single time. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's, ask some, let's go into some of the questions. Then. So the rule book um, has just gone uh, live. Um, apologies for that. We wanted to have it live a little bit sooner, but hopefully you guys can read alongside this. Um, so we'll answer as many questions as we can. And Jake is obviously here to give his expertise on rules. Marcel asked, as a UX slash graphic designer, um, I'm always concerned about the downtime you have to invest to learn rules, terminology, etc. So first part of his question is, will the rulebook have a quick play slash easy mode section so novice players can dive right in? Um, the, in terms, the, the idea of the rules is to split them into two halves. So you mm -hmm. can read the first bit and ignore the second bit until the, the reference section is designed to be, you look at it when you need it. I mean, you will need some of it fairly quickly, but yep. at least you, you, you need to read the bit about how does a turn work and how to set up the game. And that's the key thing. Um, tests are going to come up all the time, so yep. you might as well learn that as well. But if once you've learned those three things, most of the rest of it you can kind of wait until something happens and then you can look that up. So that's kind of an easier way in. Doing a, doing a there will be also the, uh, an index mm -hmm. to help you find stuff. Um, which is always useful, and I think it's it's that it's that thing. How how easy can you make it without having to with, without losing yep. things? You, you'll think have we, easier scenarios. There are easier scenarios, and I think that's right. Now I'm thinking. Uh, I think what he's talking about is is when you first get it. How do you yeah. set up your first game and play? Mm -hmm. And I think we can probably find a, a, a way of streamlining that slightly. Um, it's as I said. It's probably things like. Here's the board, set it up like this. Don't worry about what anything does, just set it up like this photograph. Mm -hmm. So there's a photograph that says, put this deck of cards here, this deck of cards here, these ones go here, just do this. Yeah, because you, you can there. copy the picture and then you yep. go from there and you just like, okay, turn this over, this is what you get. We can walk people through that, mm -hmm. um, certainly. And we've been talking about various different things that may or may not happen about QR codes and nonsense. Yeah. But it's, it, it, it's experimenting because we've got, these days we've got a whole bunch more options than we ever used to have. and the idea of having video walkthroughs and, and tutorials and all that kind of thing is, is something we're exploring obviously with our new shiny studio and our new shiny as <laughs> <laughs> and all the other different bits of you know sort of th so that so possibly doing some video stuff that that um, takes people through a specific s setup for a specific scenario to make it e maybe that would make it easier mm -hmm. um, 
that kind of thing. So I think there's a little bit of streamlining there, but we've already thought to, an, to a degree about this is the stuff you absolutely must, you know, you must know about tone structure, otherwise you can't play. But you don't necessarily need to know about how orders work when you start. So you can put that bit to one side. So all the things I think we could put to one side, I've put into the reference section. And you worry about them when you need them. Yeah. So when something mentions something, you can look it up. So if you're coming back to this after a bit of downtime and you haven't played in a little while, you can just refresh you with the kind of first section and then you and jump to it when you need to. Things when you need yeah. to, yeah, that's the idea. Um, Marcel went on to ask, um, even better, will new rules be introduced through the storybook um, to bridge the gap through a very easy, easy rule intro story to a full rule regular story? It's not something that's done at the moment, but as no. you said, it's um, something we could. Yeah, it's it's actually quite hard to do that because you'd have to we'd have to prep a whole bunch of stuff in sequence that, that told the story in sequence for the rules and works as a story in terms of Solomon Cain. So it's not something we were looking to do. Yeah, nobody, nobody been, wants the Solomon Cain goes to get an ice cream into a story, really. Yeah, not really, <laughs> no. <laughs> the de important decision points about where you have, whether you have a flake in your ice cream or not. Uh, yeah. I love it. Benjamin says Solomon oh, Cain versus the, the Chupacabra, or Glenn Reynolds said Solomon Cain lands in Roswell. <laughs> 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 Potential <laughs> intro stories, maybe. <laughs> don't, don't know, maybe... 300 years early. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saul McCain versus the Dukes of Hazard, says Rob. The music, the soundtrack to that would be epic. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> dark, dark yeah. stuff. What are those virtue kids up to again? Anyway. <laughs> 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 uh, I had a question from Seb, which I'm going to Google Translate. Um, none, of these thank have, you. None, of, none of these virtues have, have short shorts on there, do they? Oh, I'm sure we could arrange a short, short. <laughs> no, it'd be a bit no, wrong. No, 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 that, no, it'd be a that, bit wrong. That's a guest box. Uh, <laughs> you can paint if you're so inclined your virtues any way you like. If you Absolutely. wish to have red and blue and, and stripes, jokes of hazard, uh, the general Lee style. <laughs> so Seb asked a question to say, will there be an arc, arc book for Solomon Cain with illustrations from Gail M. Pongiolupi? Moreover, can we have, just like Joan of Arc, images with very high resolution to print on canvas or similar type things? I will tell you right now, small spoiler, probably more relevant to some of you than others. If you're here on Saturday, Leo will be going live with a special guest and there will be an announcement around what you can do if you're very interested in the art of Solomon Cain. That's, I don't want to give too much away. Leo's going to have to have something to share. Too much, you mean there's got to be a tiny morsel, a scrap left yeah, for Leo yeah, to spoil? Yeah, there's got to be something left <coughs> to say. Um, so on, on Saturday evening, and uh, there will be a live for you guys. Leo is at Paris El Ludique um, on Saturday, as the whole team will be. I think it's on Saturday and Sunday. So if you're well, near Paris. Friday as well, I think. Is it Friday as well? I think um, or maybe it's set up on Friday. You guys, you guys, obviously, if you're near Paris and you want to come and meet the team on Saturday and Sunday, potentially Friday, um, please do. And Leo is shouting at me for spoiling right now. <laughs> uh, we're going to have uh, um, the shoes on the other foot for me take, now. Take some of that. <laughs> Taste your own medicine, Leo. <laughs> oh, my word. Sorry, Leo. Sorry. Not really sorry. Not really sorry. So on Saturday, <laughs> a little tasty treat from Leo. You're going to have to go on a Saturday and Sunday for Paris City League. Oh, right. Okay, right. Okay. Um, you guys will have to come back and see that. People are making guesses right now about what that could be. I will say no more. Lisa had a question saying, will there be different virtue decks for adjusting the difficulty? For example, making an easy mode and a hard mode, can they be added to nightmare cards? Like a fight deck for scenarios that need it most in a flight deck mode for running away, so we can adjust ourselves the game that we want to create. So there's a couple of questions there actually. Okay, yeah, there the, are, yeah. The first thing is, specifically, Lisa said, adjusting the difficulty via different virtue decks. We can maybe allude to difficulty a little bit first. Yeah, I, I think there's there's, there's an awful lot of different ways to tweak the difficulty in the yeah. game and uh, one of the things that w we decided when we were fairly early on is we have to nail some bits down so not everything changes because that just makes it an absolute nightmare yeah. to test anything. So we, one of the things we have fixed is the virtue decks, that they are going to stay as they are. Once they're finished, we're still finessing some of the tiny little details on these, but once they are fixed, they will stay fixed and they'll be the same every time. And that has allowed us to work through the way in which the different virtues interact because we know that those points are fixed. If we change those points, then we can't balance the virtues with each other because they're different each time. Mm -hmm. 
So the, uh, the, the fact that we can say, well, Justice sort of has a deck that's got these things in that does works in this way, and Temperance has a different deck with different combinations of things in and is better at other things, that way we can work through so that the combination of different things that happen during a story mm -hmm. mean everybody gets their moment to shine. Yep. Everybody gets their moment to be support. Everybody gets the, you know, d to do what they want. And, and as a group, the players have to work together to ensure that they can cover all the bases, that they, they can say, when is this is, if this is a, fight, uh, a scene with lots of fighting in, between them they can deal with the fighting because it's seldom just down to one person. Even if you're the virtue who has most of that, uh, most of that aspect of the game, then you may have done that already, mm -hmm. and it, it may be, be in your deck. Yeah. You can't just keep going forever. You only have a certain number of these. It's a limited supply, and so there's a lot of it's about managing your hand, managing your supply of resources, and and also, but it's it's kind of there's a, a sort of meta as well about managing between you what the resources yep. are because. Typically, in, in kind of broad strokes, the, the virtue that has the most of one thing will have a kind of equivalent amount to everybody else put together. So there are, there are quite a lot of resources around, it's just people have to have them to hand and to yep. engineer them to be available. So I think the, the answer to your question, are we going to modify the virtue decks? No, uh, I think that it, it would make it very hard to balance that kind of game within the virtues and the co-op co mm -hmm. co stuff, and we don't need it to do difficulty level. Yep. There are several different ways of modifying difficulty level. Mm -hmm. Nightmare cards are the most obvious, uh, most straightforward, but there are there are other things. I mean, if you want to be very very simple, we tried another experiment where um, where we were allowing people to ro to keep less reserve and give out more and, and donate more dice to each other and things like that. So there's lots of things we, you could tweak. Mm -hmm. There's loads of little simple variants you could add right. that would change a lot of how the game um, um, typically plays. Uh, but that's why I say we have to go back and say these things are fixed, otherwise you can't possibly test anything. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You have to nail some stuff down so that, that bit is solid. Yeah. So Le the next thing Lisa alluded to was about, she was being specific about a fight deck for scenarios or a mm -hmm. flight mode for running away. So these tailored decks are moments where you have something that you know is coming or something that you can kind of predict where the story is coming and then get ready for it. But I think, as you've said there, it is a matter of either playing That's it multiple times to, well it's to learn it's it. A matter of, yeah, it's a matter of skill and it's a matter of, of the players working together. This is partly this is, this is to drive people to be cooperative. Yeah. Hold that card, because actually I think in That's a right. minute this it might we're, happen we're or I'm going to trigger this. We're clearly going to come to a fight with this guy yeah. eventually because we've just annoyed him and all his henchmen. So we're going to... Yeah. Or I'm going to talk to him. And, and if I yeah. succeed, we won't need your fight. You can right. discard it. That's but right. if it doesn't succeed, we may need it. And all of that. But also saying that, you know, we've got loads of fights between us, but we've got no explorers. Yeah. You know, somebody needs to get an explorer on the table. Mm -hmm. So if we come to a yeah. situation where we need it, somebody's got something they can do. Yeah. And it's worth noting, if I can pull your player board for a second. You can indeed. Say, with, the, with the latest version of the rules... Um, it now is kind of easier than ever um, to bring back in your, your, your discard. So you may shuffle your discard pile back into your deck literally for a single dice of single any, dice, yeah. any symbol. But the important thing is that it is going back into your deck, which means you are still reliant on drawing it. So this sure. is, again, as Jake's alluding to, a little bit of forward planning and talking to each other about what you're lacking and who maybe has it in their discard that you'll have to talk about. Um, and I think and the other thing is that's worth knowing is, is that because you all have some actions available all the time on your dashboards, you won't ever run out completely of anything. There will always be somebody who has something around yep. that, that you can use. So again, it's a matter of thinking ahead, trying to work out what's gonna happen next, planning between yourself. And, and basically it's one of the ways in which I, I tried to build in cooperation in play rather than just cooperation in name because there's yep. lots of games I've seen where you are technically playing a co-op game yep. You know the ones I yeah, mean, you know, you kind of go, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, but is there any actual, actual cooperation? Well, yeah. So I've tried to put in actual, genuine, bona fide, you <laughs> have to work with each other. And if you don't work with each other, then you will almost certainly lose. Yeah. It is not forgiving of people who are not yeah. working together. So the, the challenge will definitely be in working together and trying to predict what's happening and have the right cards for the right moment. That is where the, the essence of the game is going to lie. And if, if the dice don't let you down, giving you a the deck that just helps you run away when you need to run away. But dice, yeah, I mean, it, it make it very, it will make it kind of trivial if you could just say, oh, well, we need a running away deck now, so now we have that. And yeah. we will need a fight deck now and we've got that. It, it, it takes away a lot of the challenge. 
Um, and I mean, the dice are actually reasonably flexible. You've got mm -hmm. quite a lot of ways of mitigating rolls. Yep. You've got a lot of options. You usually have five things in play you can do. Uh, sorry, six, because that's an either or. Um, you've got a lot of choices. And, and then you've also got, you can help the other guys do that if you don't like any of the five choices you've got in front of you. So there's a lot of, a lot of ways of working around. And, and it's interesting to watch people play and hear them kind of come up with a plan and then get, get what they want or they carry on and they do that plan. And then they get something they don't quite fit, what they I can't quite do what they were going to do. And then they start working together to work out how they can get yep. with each other come to do the, you know, what, how can we fix that thing that we couldn't just do right then, but we can work out, oh, well, you've got this thing. And, if I give you one of these, then you can do that. Or maybe you don't even need me to give you anything, but yep. maybe we'll just change up what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't do this, but I can do something else with it. And now the plan is resting on your turn. Yeah, I hate that responsibility when that happens. <laughs> Especially when it involves me needing to roll a simple that I, I, have, no <laughs> faith, I have no faith in my dice rolling at all. Um, no, Gabriel. no, there's two, two sides I've got faith on. <laughs> <laughs> um, forgive me, I'm going through the questions, guys. They might not be in the exact order that they were posted, but I'll try and make sure that we get through them all. Um, Gabriel said, will any specific equipment, I'm thinking the rifle or the staff or so on, have related effects in play? And if so, how? Yes, yes, there are. Um, uh, Ke Solomon Kane doesn't have a lot of different equipment. He's not like a sort of D&D &D hero where he picks up shiny toys and plus five Avengers all the time. He... <laughs> he um, he tends to have a couple of pistols, a sword, a, a dagger, and occasionally a musket. And sometimes, depending on where he is in the stories, uh, sometimes he has longer staff. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, there's almost nothing he ever has. So these things are, they do turn up. Um, the musket is an interesting one because the musket is longer ranged, so that needs slightly different rules. Uh, what the the way we do this is actually with a discovery card. So when he has a musket, the discovery card with the musket rule on is on the table in play, and he can then use that. Mm -hmm. But remembering this time period, reloading takes a long time. Yep. So whether it's a pistol or a musket, te you tend to get one shot out of each one. So he's usually got two pistols, so that's two shots. But by that point, I mean the, the, the period, it's you fire a pistol, you either reverse it so you can use the back end as a club <laughs> or you just stick it back in your belt and worry about that afterwards <laughs> this is why you see pis yeah. people people at this period and you see this with, this with pirates as well where they have six or eight pistols on them and that's bec not because they just want to look cool although it does but that's because <laughs> they know that they're going they're gonna, to they're gonna fire that one put it away get another one fire that one put it away get another one and then that's how you get more than one shot yeah just trying to see now because I know I know we have Lacosta. We had we who had Lacosta has a series of throwing knives. Whoops. Yeah, we had. Right. Um, um, I'm just seeing. We saw we saw a render the other day. Oh yes, we did indeed. Yeah. And I think he had quite a few pistols on him. And um, so good, like Lacosta has multiple throwing knives, including the one that he has in his, in his hand. Oh. And that is the kind of common thing you'll see, as Jake mentions, with the pistols. And something, if you anyone who watched the the playthrough um, that we did with um, the Wings of the Night. Mm -hmm. um, if I got that right with himself, Babis and Karina, yep, anyway, that one. Right. Um, you will have seen that the, the spear equipped warriors will attack from a space away. Whereas if they were equipped with daggers or something more short range, they would actually want to move in yep. to your space to engage okay. you. Yep, that's it. And so that's, uh, that's a very simplified version of the way you'll see some things replicated. There are, yeah, there are a few things, but in the stories, there are so few that we, we didn't feel we could just add loads of extra stuff yep. and, and still keep the kind of the, the right vibe. But yes, muskets turn up. In Africa, mainly. Rapier or skewer <coughs> air, boots of cannibal outrunning. <laughs> boots of cannibal outrunning, he'd like them. Yeah, hat of scarling. <laughs> Some suggestions for I think it. he already has one. Yeah, he definitely does not need improved scarling, I don't think, does Solomon Cain. Plus, plus one scowling. Yeah, he's already like, he's got expert I in think that. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> you can do that. Dublar said, can we also get a town crier Leo in the same scale as Jonah Barkey at Teen Mill Minis? Unfor I'll be honest with you, Dublar, unfortunately at the moment, Jonah Bark is finishing up and is on his way to his factory and different components. It really is um, at, at that stage now where it's kind of going out of our hands and, and we're kind of just now watching our watches, impatiently waiting for it to come back to us. So unfortunately, the ship's sealed in that, but let's not say that Joan of Arc is something and Time of Legends is something that we won't be I exploring in the future. You also, there, if you, I mean, there, there was a Joan of Arc, it's Wednesday, so what's that Wednesday? Yes, there was. So, so there was, a, I mean, yet more 
bits from the factory, factory samples, uh, not samples, factory production things, I think they are. Yeah. Um, trees, trees and bridges. Green and trees. All and sorts I've been assured theory. that the tents will be red. The tents in the update red? are grey, but I'm sure they'll brown. be bro browny red. Burgundy. Anyway. Brown. I'm, a I'm sure. The colour that isn't grey. There is an amazing picture that I will share on Instagram, um, either this evening or tomorrow, of when we first saw the trees. Leo thought it was fantastic, so he called us from Paris to share it with Jake, Ben and I, and just held up these trees, and we loved it. But I initially thought he was holding up broccoli. Uh, I think they I all did. did. I thought he was calling us just to say, look what I've got for lunch, it's some broccoli. And I was like, it's very impressive, Leo. And then I realized as the camera focused thank, on what it actually Thank you was. for sharing, Leo. <laughs> and it was amazing. And I have a, an amazing screenshot of us all just like, that's, <laughs> that's so uh, good. So I think I might share that why, on Instagram. Why are, you, why are you showing it? Oh, that's what you were doing. I was yeah. wondering what you were doing. I was doing. taking yeah. pictures yeah. frantically. That's, yeah. um, why you show us your lunch, Leo? I have a, I have a question in, in Francais that I'm going to quickly use Google Translate for. Okay. Thank goodness for technology. Um, are there miniature sets that are planned in add-on or stretch goal? Leo, can you help us with this one? Make sure the I'm miniature sets right. that are planned. Add-ons, I mean, the, the, there are... This is the, the ad, question. The add-ons all have miniatures in. So, yes, there are more sets of miniatures in the add-ons. And the stretch goals definitely have more more add-on uh, more miniatures in as well. So, kind I'm of. Just, yes I'm just yeah. asking. I'm just. Uh, we and we. Just asking to see if anyone can help with the translation, please, on that one, because so I'm not, not, quite, I'm not sure, quite sure. Not quite sure what exactly he, what. what yeah, uh, absolutely, I'm not quite sure what he's getting at. Yes, yes, we have lots more miniatures. Um, I'm not sure if Ermacore is repeating the same question. Oh yes, it was the decor, of course. I should recognize that word, but now it's terrain again. Is there any terrain, terrain add-on or stretch goals? No, there are no terrain add-ons, and I don't think off the top of my head there are any terrain stretch goals. The thing about terrain, the thing about terrain is if we make a piece of terrain, it means we don't make a miniature. And most people value cool miniatures like Leo over barrels. Yeah. And this is the thing, we, you know, to do anything bigger than something like a barrel in this scale, it would just encompass your board and would detract a lot well, from the actual. And it means you don't get a virtue, or you don't get an ogre, or yep. you know. And it's it's hard to think of scenery that's so cool that you would not have a cool big miniature instead. Yes. You know, update number twenty is great. We need more examples like this, as far as so yes. Just as a quick, anyone who is watching live Which or if you're watching, update those the rules. Oh, right. um, yeah. Anybody who's watching this later down the line, update twenty is now live. We've done loads of updates um, to get the rules out there. And again, this is just an early early copy. No, these are not finished. They will improve as time goes on, and as we take your feedback on board and we do more play testing internally, um, we so will we have, continue yeah, to improve. We, we have we have some more time. I mean, the 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 time before we deliver it to your door is is quite long. Um, partly that's because it's a long, long way away and there's a deliver it on the ship and yeah. then before that we have to make it and then physically, but there is a bit of time for us to finish tinkering and testing and do loads more playthrough and deal with our playtest groups and our <laughs> ambassadors and all these other people <laughs> and you are part of that process. So, so we would love for you to have a look at the rules, see if you can find anything that's wrong. As I said in the update, if there's a we, we know that we need to add, uh, add examples, but which are the most important examples? So w have a look. If there's a bit that's not clear, let us know which bits that are. If most people say part A is not clear, that's the bit that gets all the examples. People, yeah. So I think we left the comments on on it. Don't I believe so. Comment, but if we did, I think David said, yeah. Yeah. yeah please yeah. go ahead. Yeah, and you feel free to comment on the rules. On the rules um, themselves. Go all over them. I would. It's, it's your feedback on your thoughts and things you find easy or challenging when yep. reading it are just as important to us. There was a bit of feedback on the rulebook actually. Someone has, a uh, Dublar again actually, managed to read it. It said 24 pages, lots of great pictures, read in 15 minutes, easy to learn, no problem, very clear rules. I have all trust in Solomon game, just wait for the all in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The all in is coming. It is coming. It's um, coming. So yes, it does appear, some people said the link might not be working, but it does look like it is. There is multiple people have said they've read it, so please give it another go. Nice that he's, I mean, it, it, what I like is that he's read it read it quickly, yeah. and he said it's clear. Mm -hmm. They are the two, you know, it's not long. Well, it's, it's as long as it, as long as it is because there's lots of pictures in it. But we will, we will put more examples in. There will be a glossary at the end, sorry, an index at the end so you can find stuff more yeah. easily. So it's got room to improve, but if he's saying that now, yeah. that's a good start. Okay. Oh, yes. And sorry, Leo said there was a, a small link issue, but now in the update and also the link on the main campaign page itself on Kickstarter, okay. all the links are now so working. So 
Good. Thank you very, okay. very much for that. So if you tried before and it didn't work, please go back and have another go. Refresh the page. It should be fine now. Um, so a question not related to the rules, but worth pitching, I think. Sure. Um, Lawrence asked, Howard's source material has been criticised for its apparent racism. Have you yes. considered any way to address this in the adaption of the board game, or are you more concerned about being true to the source material? It's a difficult one. I mean, in, in, in terms of... Um, in terms of was he racist? He was very much of his time, which was, in modern views, racist. So it's it's hard to say. It's um, it, if you look at it from a t you know twenty first century eyes, it's definitely racist behaviour and condescending to the, uh, the the foreigners and all the rest of it. Uh, to the French as much as the Africans, to be honest, French are all bad guys. Yeah. But um, in terms of what we're doing here, the actual story, unless you consider helping someone to be racist which I don't then because Solomon goes around and he helps everybody he finds that needs help yeah what, what he's not Solomon is actually Solomon himself is I think oddly unracist in the in the way he behaves because he's he just goes around helping people he thinks need help yep. now the language of the books is 1920 mm -hmm. so it's it's predictably non PC so we will be picking and choosing our quotes carefully when we come to using quotations in the book so we don't offend anybody because that's not the intention at all. But in terms of story, he's fighting against a, a, a tribe of cannibals or he's fighting against some monsters. In, in the stories, it's the same thing to Solomon Cain. He's not, you know, they are the bad guys. Yeah, there's several instances in the stories of him helping multiple people. Absolutely. I mean, he, and he is actually, I mean, if you think about how, how he goes around and he helps, uh, he helps... Uh, various different tribes, mm -hmm. and he's not, and he's actually quite quite unhappy about some yeah. of the uh, behaviour of some of the other white folk who were wandering around Africa at the time. So I think it's um, it's a tricky one because the language is definitely not language you could get away with mm -hmm. these days. Um, the character, I don't find him intrinsically racist. No, but he, then he I'm doesn't white, really so see racism as much as he sees just good. I think, evil, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, he's, he sees. Yeah, I mean, he sees somebody. Who is he's, he's an innocent in danger, and he wants to rescue them, and that's kind of as far as he sees. Mm -hmm. And he sees someone who is bad, and he wants to do them in, basically. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so, whether this this bad person is is African or French or anything else, I think he's had run-ins with all sorts of different people in the past. If you, there's there's not lots of stories about him running, having run-ins with the, uh, the Barbary pirates and things and uh, off to uh, India and what have you, but they're mentioned occasionally and you get the impression he has been globetrotting and doing what he sees as righting wrongs and fighting the good fight for truth, justice and, uh, and against darkness, wherever he finds it, in whatever shape it may take, whether this is a monster or a human, not interested. So it's a little. So it's, we're staying true to Solomon. I think it's probably the best. Yes, way we're to trying to try to stay true to Solomon, but we're also trying not to offend people with, which would mainly be text, text kind of references. Yep. I think so. We'll, we'll steer clear of anything that's really obviously unpleasant. Um, uh, Lee had a question. Just I'll answer very quickly. Will I be able to do a late pledge for Joan of Arc? Unfortunately, that the pledge manager is long since closed for Joan of Arc now. However. We are very busy at the moment, but if you'd like to send an email to support at mythicgames.net with a list of what you would like, we may be able to help you out. And um, as I said, at, the, at this point, Joan of Arc is all sent away and it's almost to the point where it's nearly out of our hands now while we wait for production. But if we have extras of things, overstocks of things, which we do, of course, do to make sure in case there's any issues, um, we might be able to do it. So you can drop us an email, support at mythicgames.net, and we'll get back to you as, as quick as we can. David asked a question, will the tiles be numbered? This would make it easier to find the tile we need when setting up each scenario. Yes, please. And an A and a, a, an a, an a, and a B side. Because, <laughs> yeah. of course, they will be double-sided. Um, so 17A, so, so the maps can say 17A, 4B, 3C, yeah. except for one of three sides. Easy. Let's not do that. No, don't do that. That'd be confusing. <laughs> Pyramid. Triple-sided triple -sided <laughs> tiles, no. Um, Norbert asked. I'm so innovative. Yeah, triple, I think you're a little bit late on that one. Triple-sided like tiles? There's, um, there's that mountain climbing game, isn't there, where you play on a board that is actually a, a pyramid. Oh, yeah. Foiled again. Foiled um, again. You have to make, oh, who's, who's got the name of that for me? Well, it's out of my head right now. Um, you have to make your way up to see it, the safe pass. Anyway, 
Someone, someone will correct me and tell me. Norbert asked, for either fan-made translations or post-campaign translations by Mythic Games, if we had other languages available as PDF, it would be beneficial to have added an index number to each single card. He, he points out a couple of reasons why this would be beneficial, but I think, will the cards be indexed, first of all? Yes, we already have them. Yes, yes all of the cards are individually uh, coded. I, I don't know so if the camera is going to be close enough for this. Um, here is not a sound. Of, right down here, you all see of, a little. All of the cards have an individu individual individual identifier, so you can you can reference individual cards. Absolutely helps us with rules for, testing. For and testing, and that is absolutely magic. Oh, there you can see that. There we go. Yeah. And so again, this is just an example of one of the very simple. Yeah, discovery but cards. I mean, all of, all of the cards have. Uh, I think the only ones that don't at the moment are I think there's an event card. There's an E three on the bottom. So I mean, they all have. They all have things. I think the only ones that don't are the chapter cards because they are already numbered. Thumbs up for a sharp image. That was a flipping sharp image, wasn't it? Look at, look at that. Oh, where is it? Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Show some, show some spoiler. I don't know what cards have we not shown here. Trouble for Solomon, a wild, but a fatal error. Oh, another one, another one. I think last one's in the Everyone's uh, screenshotting, screenshotting. That's, that's in the update, I think. A fatal screenshotting, error. screenshotting. That's a... Uh, a wild blue in. So we haven't got the elephant grass one. Show them real, real. Yeah, we show the real quality. <laughs> so these uh, <laughs> fatal error four four oh four. I very much like that. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Gilder. Four oh four. Oh four yeah. Um, yeah. So those were a couple of quick examples of the discovery cards, which are things that you will see more of. Yeah, yeah. One of the questions asked previously there was when will you see more let's plays. Full disclosure, we had originally planned to do some little um, short one chapter long Let's Plays um, just to give you guys a feeling of the different things you'll be getting up to. So the talking, the exploring, the fighting, the running. With the initial videos we've put out and the initial feedback we've had, what instead we're going to do is we're going to do a, a full-fledged version of something from what's probably going to be, bar some tweaking, in the final game. Um, so we're going to work on doing, can we can tell them what one's going to be, can we? Sure, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, well, I say if we. Can, if you can remember. I can. Jack and the game designers <laughs> um, are working on some chapters, the opening chapters of a blue flame of, the blue flame of Vengeance. The blue flame of Vengeance, yeah. Sure. Um, so on camera, we are going to play some of that um, and uh, give you guys a feel for the different options and things you could take. Um, I can't tell you exactly when it's going to be because we want to make sure it's just right, but that will be coming uh, over the next few days. Um, feel spoiler for this for the link for update 20. Uh, you're as bad as Leo as. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not as bad as Leo. He's you're only not as bad as Leo because Leo got there first. Yes, exactly. He spoiled all the stuff before you could do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I'll say as well, guys, we're doing a bit of a test tonight. You will not notice this if you're watching on Kickstarter Live. Hopefully, you will notice this if we do it later. And um, we're trying to record this so hopefully we can upload it to YouTube afterwards. I'm hoping, if I cross my fingers by saying this now, that it will work and you guys will be able to watch this later as well for anyone that misses it. Glorious high fidelity. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, I'm just seeing, reading the rest of Norbert's question here. Um, he was basically asking um, a little bit about the translations again. He says, even yeah. if you were quite firm with English, if needed, you could look up a specific and particularly different card quickly. So I think what he's, he's trying to say is if we had an index to go alongside any future translations that we do, it means if the card is slightly confusing, they could just index to it and get a reference. To the English like one. To the English one. Uh, or, or vice versa. Okay. So I think that's something a that card index online is what he's asking for. Yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like it. That to me, that's something that's wouldn't be hard to do. It's something that we will kind of do through the process anyway. I don't. That doesn't. I mean, as I'm not going to do it myself, that doesn't sound like it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> there are <laughs> an awful lot of cards. Yes. Uh, in there are game. lots of cards. Uh, Leo did throw out a number in the live stream he, the other night. He's, Leo said two thousand, which sounds a little bit high. A little me. high. A, a little, but um, I'm, I think we'll, we'll go over. A, we'll go into four figures. Yes. So, I'm not. I mean, obviously, it depends partly on where we get to, yes. and partly on what stretch goals we do, and 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 and. Mm -hmm. um, and I keep. I keep. Oh, Leo is calling me now. Oops. Oh no. I don't. I don't know if he's going to try and be funny or if he's going to actually say. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Leo. <laughs> Go away and get your Oscar. Get out of here, Leo. You're gonna you're eating up all my bandwidth with your pretty face. Get out of here. Get out. Get out of here. You gotta quit spoiling. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
interestingly, that was not planned, but poor Leo, poor Leo, he loves to spoil, and if I do steal his spoilers, there, there wasn't, I wasn't doing any spoiling. I wasn't doing any spoiling. We said America's coming tomorrow. We said the art, the art thingy. I mean, he said it. The art thingy's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly mean, I mean, said the art thingy's coming on Saturday. The cards, the cards aren't spoilers, man. You've seen man, them. The cards aren't the play spoilers. Uh, you said you you'd said you'd already talked about America. So. Uh, <laughs> Damn it, Leo! Ruffled my feathers. You ruffled my feathers, man. No, that's not what I said. I didn't say those words specifically. Nearly. <laughs> Um, no, back to the questions. Um, Harlette, Harlette had said, some minis have very large bases, like the Snick or the Red Horror, yep. and some have, there are some small spaces on the board tiles. So there some are. of the spaces are small. Can the large minis enter those spaces even if they're empty? Yes. Uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the, rules for, the rules for the board, because I wanted to have something where it's about more about it, it, we're not going to micromanage all of the details of exact positioning in a kind of and, and get too focused on that because I want people to be talking to each other and having a cooperative game rather than arguing about whether this millim is Can two millimeters four, that nine. Is, oh, are you okay, two yeah. millimeters this way or two millimeters that way uh, so the rules about where where things are on the board they're, they're quite flexible and quite broad so even though uh, the 80 mil bases on the giant snake for example on the humongous snake are going to fall over the edges of some of the the areas. That's yeah, like that's some, fine. It's, like it's, cl space it's clear to see which one he's in. Yeah. So it's it, you know it's clear enough to tell which thing which space he's in. So I think. But no one know, else would be able to join. But in no one else would fit. Yeah. No, no one else would fit in that area if he was if he was in, uh, because the I mean these are forty mil wide bases and the yeah. snakes on an eighty wide base. Yeah. So snakes on a base that is that that wide. Yeah. So you can see how if you had the snake in that in that area, and I think you see this on the yeah, camera. Yeah. Hey. If you can have the snake in there, there will be pretty much no space at all for anybody else to fit in. Yeah. Uh, and the rule is, if you've got whichever whichever area most of your base in is the area you're in. So you just make sure that's. Uh, and so the yes, the snake can fit in things because he's the only one who can fit in the small areas. Um, I will bring up a question I actually that was asked, I think on the comments rather than actually here in the video earlier okay. today that I read, and it was very simply, will the areas, so these kind of areas yep. you see here, um, be different from board to board? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we, we've done, I mean, some of the ones we've got at the moment look the same because we've just we used exactly the same thing for speed in giving you examples of, of what we've been working on. The artwork on several of the boards you've seen uh, is, is just work in progress. So the 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 areas the sort of sectioning of it is uh, is is one or two ones we've done that have been repeated. Yep. The, uh, I was working with Bavis this afternoon, and we were looking at um, different areas for a different scenario we were working on. Can we talk about the scenario that I that we're no longer doing on camera because we're going to do the blue flame events instead? But can we talk a little bit about the map for that other one? We can. Of course Which we one? Can. Oh, that one. Don't oh, we don't, oh, we don't have it with map, us. Oh, we don't have it with us because it, yes, it was very prototypey, but. No, 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 we had a we had a proper one. We had a proper one. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. just going to send you. Do yeah, it? Do we have a proper one? Yeah, we have a proper one. Oh, go and get the proper one. I don't know where. I'll buy some time. You'll buy some time. I'll buy some time. Do you can find it? Do you? Oh. We'll show you it next time. Oh, he's. I'm not going to argue with Jack, guys. He is the he no, is the what, final say. On one this. of the one of the um. So what we've what we've got is one of the things we had. One of the things we were going to oh, do. Oh, Jack's not happy. <laughs> okay, get it, I will. No. Can, uh, <laughs> mm. Okay, I'll go. I will go and get it. I will go, go get it. it. I'll go get it. Okay, well hold on. Yeah. You gotta, let me switch cameras so you don't see Jack slip any skin. Uh, <laughs> switch to the super secret camera. Super this secret. is really high professional stuff. Okay. I didn't realize you had it. I thought you just had the. Can you bring the the? You came in with it. With it. You came in. The, you came Did in, I? You came in the office with a box with it in it. Like no, it. those were those were T-shirts. Oh, days ago. Oh, days ago. Yeah. What is happening? My days are, are just blurring together. Um, but can you bring, if you can find the original white paper version of it, bring that too, because that'll be interesting to see. Oh, okay. Right, Jack is now, <laughs> Jack is oh, now away, away, away on a mission. <laughs> so I'll fill you guys in, and hopefully what Jack is going gonna, is gonna to bring. Oh, bring me a pack. Bring me back a beer as well, Jack, please. That would be, uh, that'd be awesome. So what I said previously was true. We understand that we have had difficulty um, getting across the game. 
and some people have said, you know, it looks quite slow on camera. I will be very honest. The video uh, where myself, Babas, and Karina um, played you know, three chapters, I couldn't believe when I got up for that recording and saw how long that video was because uh, to me, it just was immersive. The time, the time literally uh, flew. I think a, a comparison I could give would be something like Twilight, Twilight Imperium, where you play for a long time, but you don't notice the time going because you're, you're kind of doing so much and you're thinking so much and you're involved so much. So am I still am I still streaming? Someone met, someone say something, it looks like my stream has crashed on my screen. Oh, I'm having a nightmare tonight. Are we still there? I'm gonna go ahead and assume that we are still there because oh, my, my machine has just absolutely crashed on me. Um, so what we had originally, oh, there we go, there we go. Just thank you, thank you guys. So what we'd originally planned to do was try to break the game up a little and show you some of the different aspects. So Skulls in the Stars, you got to see Solomon exploring and um, trying to find the trail of the Traveler. And then once he found the Traveler, whether he was dead, close to being dead or alive and well, ready to run away fit, you then got to see a fight with the ghost. And it kind of just didn't play out as smoothly as we wanted. So what we were then going to do is try developing some little short examples where you could see other things going on in the game. And one of the ones we tested, um, one of the ones we tested, don't apologize guys, you know, that, that's cool. Um, one of the things we tested was um, a very short scenario where we kind of had Solomon going into a cave with a bunch of villagers, NPCs, that were essentially with Solomon, working with him to find the entrance to the Death's Black Riders, where they were. Um, the tricky thing is before this, though, Solomon had to gather information, he had to get some intelligence before finding the cave and hopefully finding the entrance. And it was a slowly kind of um, evolving um, kind of discovery process he was doing in the cave. Um, before the big kind of finale. But the tricky thing was, we wanted to make sure we showed you guys something exciting. So we said, you know what, let's put this on the back burner. But we'd already sent some stuff for print. We'd already sent some stuff away to get prototyping done. So what arrived the other day, <laughs> I remember handing it to Jeff now, was some prototype boards for it. And we were talking about terrain and how the boards are gonna be different. And the boards for this cave scenario were very different indeed because they had blocking terrain. I don't want to give too much away because Jack's going to get it now, but although we're not doing 3D terrain, our add-ons or expansions, the boards themselves will be f far improved from these. They, we really are going to do a lot of work to make these very, very, very pretty um, and, and put a lot more detail and make sure that they can orientate in different ways so you get different scenarios. Um, and what we had, oh, here we go. Uh, what we had, I'll put the stealth camera on, stealth camera on. Oh, sorry, hello. What we had then was this um, sample. So you will have taverns, you will have caves, forests, savannas, jungles, all these things. And, oh man. Oh, I haven't seen, I haven't seen these yet. Yes, thank you for saying you love my accent, Miguel. Um, nothing can stop me making my own 3D terrain and nothing should stop you. Never stop making your own The tension is something we're going to work on. The discovery decks are going to get bigger and we'll do even more for that. Uh, where, where's my beer? Oh, closed. Oh, man. Sorry, Irma Court. Sorry, buddy. Um, so. Oh, this is cool. Are we going to show all three stages? Well, oh, yeah, we can show various, I bought various oh, different things. You guys are. So, well, this is a game design chat, I guess. Let me, yeah, clear, yeah, let yeah. me clear you some space. So, Jake kind of has three different stages here of where scenarios come well, from. This is some pretty behind the scenes stuff actually. Stuff. Um, I'm gonna clear some space and let him lay some things out. So uh, obviously we're going to have, um, oh no, Justice has had an accident. Oh, when did that happen? Oh, I think Justice. just now. <laughs> uh, well she, oh, she, was, she was accidented before I touched there. Uh. I'll, watch, I'll watch the instant action replay later. <laughs> I'll have it on camera. Okay, let's see. What have we got right, here? So we've got a big space. We've got, we got a whole bunch, of, whole bunch of different things. We've been, we've been toying with each of the tiles. The tiles in the final version will have, um, will have fixed points along the edge where yep. the, air, the lines jo joining the areas enter and leave. Mm -hmm. So we, we were playing with where, and don't worry about where they go in the middle because yes, it's the don't. edges that, that is important. So we were trying to, to try, we're trying various different experiments. I don't know what goes on the side of that one. Oh, there you go. That's the kind of, we're trying different different combinations of different measurements. I think you see these. Um, so the different colored lines are whether it's 
eight, 12, eight, mm -hmm. or whether it's uh, five, 10, five, or whatever, different combinations. We tried lots of different versions, settled on one we liked, and then we, um, we ended up with, uh, we, well, other things we did, we tr tried using straight lines for things instead of, instead of wobbly lines. So this is, and what we're gonna be doing is, although these enter and leave the area, mm -hmm. the yep. tile on the same point, yep. Uh, and obviously you're not going to just interme interleave Savannah yeah. and Tavern yeah. and uh, River and so on at the same time. But to give them a different feel, even though they are still areas and still the same kind of idea. I mean, these are all very simple. These, we've just used nine areas on all of these as a test. Uh, this isn't, these aren't final layouts. The, I, the final layouts will be a mixture of different numbers of areas on the board. It's just the, the key thing is that they enter and leave the same place. So they can all tessellate in different directions yep. and they can always go different ways around. But the interiors are going to be straight lines because that, that fits with edges of walls, edges of, edges of uh, ed, you know, doors, furniture and so on. Um, the outdoors will be wobbly lines, like, or the uh, natural environment will be wobbly lines, like these <laughs> ones. Behind the curtain of playtesting. Behind the curtain of playtesting, yeah. This is, and, and, and so these ones actually, these ones. The key in became, oh, here we go. Um, I think that one was that one. No, it's not that one. It's not that one. It's, oh, where is it? Is it that one? Oh, it's that one, isn't it? I think it's that one. That one ended up being that one. Yeah, pop it down. Yeah. yeah. That one ended up being maybe that one. Yeah, yeah. that's the one. Looks oh, like that sorry. one. That one became, this one became, you see this one became this one? A little bit. We hadn't quite prepped for this. No, we haven't no. prepped for this at all. And then I can't remember which way around these go. Um, but these were these were done before we finalised where all the edges went and joined, so they don't quite work here. But which means it's the wrong way around. So that probably goes there, and yeah. that goes there. Right? Someone was saying no. that these may be used for D and D or Conan RPG. And actually, do you know what? These would work great. I can see some cobalt down in these mines. Uh, yeah, but, the, the but this is the idea. I mean, we, we, we work on these to start with. Work, we, put, we play it on this, make sure it works that way. That way. Yeah, there you go. We work on these. Um, you got okay. cameras everywhere. We work on these to start with, just bits of paper, and we get the idea that the scenario works, and we, we block it out. And then once we've got the idea, we start doing test pieces. These are some test pieces with, with arc that we, just to see what, what we could get and kind of caves. The black areas, uh, the black areas are areas you cannot enter. They are absolutely blocked. So we also have walls in, interior, in the interior ones where you've got um, taverns and whatnot, like Rattle of Bones, for example, yep. um, which is all inside. Um, and the idea is a, a black, solid black area you cannot cross. And that makes the uh, moving around these very, very different because you've suddenly got bar barriers to go. So if I want to go from here to here, I have to go around. If I want to go from here to here, I have to go around there or around, around here. I'm going to throw a curveball question at you. How do shadows and virtues deal with uh, impassable walls and barriers? And they can't go through them either. Oh, okay. So they, they, have to, they have to go around as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously, obviously the, the pathing for shadows and is quite interesting because you can when you've got the on this map particularly um you've got a whole bunch more control kind of, yeah. well you, because you you've got all this stuff in the way of where they move yeah. you can be quite clever in leading them down the yeah. wrong path um but also i mean remember that we've, we're laying these out square because it's convenient to show you but actually some of the scenarios are like are like that shape yeah, oh sorry, yeah. some of the scenarios are l-shaped some of the scenarios are in a row some of the scenarios like the one you saw as playing the second one you saw as playing three was, was three by two um, and so we can mess with the I mean we could do this the side passages but it's worth noting just for everyone watching at home these are very much still prototypes as Jackson alluded to giving us something to, to really play test yeah. and get a feel for we will continue to improve these and yes they will be double-sided yeah, um, these one these ones are you can tell these are these are not finished these are not intended to be finished these are, uh, sorry, they're very impassable <laughs> <laughs> on the back. Um, but uh, you, uh, the, point, the point we're trying to make really is that there are different things happening on different tiles that some of the tiles will have nine areas, some will have 14 areas, 
and obviously that makes moving across them very different. Um, and a combination of those plus complete barriers, mm -hmm. plus the layout you've got on each one, plus the discovery cards giving you terrain rules that are specific to particular uh, chapters, gives you quite a variety without having to be really kind of intrusive and mark loads of stats yep. all over the board. There you go, there you have it. So I can't remember what question we were answering originally, but there you go, that gives you a bit of a feeling. I will say that at the moment on the main Kickstarter page for Solomon Cain, the tiles you're seeing are representations is the final thing. You know, just to give you an idea, although you see some repetition uh, across the add-ons, for example, that will not be the case for the art in the final game. We will have different art for lots of different tiles. Your, your settings like this, the four cave tiles, you're not I gonna have them duplicated. I, I, would, I would expect all the, I mean, this is bold, yeah. but I would expect all the tiles to be unique art on each side. The graphic designers and fans all just went, <gasps> <laughs> they do that. They do it all the time. <laughs> Monday morning. <gasps> no, 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 no. <laughs> but I think that's. I think that's not unreasonable. There are no. millions of tiles. Absolutely. Um, and 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 Carl's really. And we have cool. so many settings to explore. Yeah, and and that's the thing is is, <laughs> when I said before. Solomon Kane is a globetrotter. He really, he turns up in radically different environments. And to represent those, not just in terms of the art, but in terms of how best, in terms of laying out the areas, do we represent the difference between a cave and a savannah mm -hmm. or jungle? And so, you know, if jungle's more difficult to move through, if it's, if it's dense, if it's tricky to, to get past, maybe that needs a larger number of areas so it physically takes longer to move across it. Yeah that's a very simple way of incorporating something like that into the way the tile is laid out. Uh, Lee Sharp, we will add a $5 million stretch goal to buy you a bigger house for all the Mythic game stuff, no problem. Um, struggling, struggling to store all of our stuff. I know, it's, 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 a, tough. it's a trial. Um, First world problem. So that, that, yes, that was all in relation, I think, to the snake and the red horror and the tiles and how they're gonna fit. So that was, that's, that's what that question rolled into. Um, we have another question from Gabrielle. He said, could we see a bit of how different, how different each virtue deck will be? Specific actions slash different types of action ratio. We have the virtue decks here, which will give you a feeling, but I think there's still more being play tested. They're, they're uh, yeah, they're still, they're still being fiddled with um, um, I like in detail. One of the interesting questions I've been asked a couple of times is, is which um, which virtue I like the most. And interestingly, Prudence is the virtue I like to play the most and I think is actually the most attractive mini. The reason for me is oh, actually a, a Prudence as yeah, well. is a couple of cards that Prudence has that makes me really enjoy her. And these are not in the other virtue decks. These are unique to Prudence and make her feel very different from any of okay. the other uh, uh, any other virtues. So this one, for example, nominate a player, they may take one card of their choice from the discard pile and add it to their hand, directly to their hand, meaning you don't have to go and search for it, you can get it immediately when you need it, which can be crucial if ambushed or, or your plan goes awry. Um, modify any track by one can be an absolute lifesaver. If you watch the uh, playthrough where we had, where we, spoilers, uh, we're not successful in escaping. A modified track, an extra modified track or one might have given us the last turn we needed to get away and that's Prudence's real clutch ability. And this one is actually <coughs> my ultimate favorite card in the game currently, is all players who have not started their turn this round might add a dice face of their choice to their reserve. It skips completely the donation and goes straight to reserve, which means you can still have two to near the dice on top of a reserve dice, which can make for some six or even seven dice turns, which is, is, is epic. Prudence really shines um, at helping everybody else shine. That's, 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 that's her thing. She, she's, uh, she's a real team player. Yep. She, she really wants to, you know, she, she just sets up everybody else to do the killer blow. She's not the, the one who scored the goal. She's the one who sets up the guy yep. to score the goal. She's, I, I really like the, the way she plays well. And, and, yeah, sorry, forgive me. Sorry, just while I was no. in my head, to show, because Gabriel asked also about distribution, Prudence does have a single fight of three. Hopefully that's in focus. Um, but then no other fight cards. Yeah. So just a single Prudence. fight of three. Um, you're up to the board? Yeah, oh, I'm up to the you're, board. You're asking? No, I'm afraid that you, you wouldn't want She has that. a fight she's zero. Got a, she's got a yeah. fight zero on her board. Um, so, you know, she is all round going to be able to kind of fulfill that fight gap when she needs to, but not for as long as someone like Courage. 
Want to talk about one of them? I was just going to say courage, courage is courage is probably the most straightforward yeah, of sure. the uh, yeah sure. Uh, courage, I think, is, is one of the most straightforward because courage is about Ooh, courage. There's moving and fighting mainly. That's that's what courage is about. It's very straightforward. You want to be in the fight, you want to be able to get to the fight, you want to be able to get where you need to be to get an advantage and win the fight. And that means that courage has the most fight cards. Uh, that they have lots of move cards as well, and then all of the other things they've got little tasters of, but they've not got. Um, a lot of the finesse and yep. the kind of meta game. They, it's, a, it's a very different style of play. It's the, it's the equivalent, I suppose, of, instead of playing a barbarian mm -hmm. instead of playing a wizard. So a wizard could have all sorts of interesting, clever, intricate, chained combo yep. stuff, whereas the barbarian just hits things. Yep. And that's kind of a bit, a, bit how just, uh, a bit how courage is, that courage is just about. And, and she has a move on her board, but then she also has multiple moves that specifically send Solomon charging or yeah, towards, towards his objectives. Goal. Or um, yeah. Um, so yes, so for example, move Solomon Cain one closer to an enemy objective, or move Solomon Cain two closer. Yeah. You, you also see whoop, wrong camera. You also see a little bit of um, strength is quite willing to give up strength statistics. She's quite bold. Courage, courage, yeah. courage will give up. Yeah. Because strength is sort of the Solomon Cain's physical, yep. like his hit points almost, is his physical survival. But but some of the really big power moves from from just it, from courage um, require you to spend that. So that's yeah. a bit of a. She can put one back, but it's. I, I really want to give. I want to give a spoiler for a rule that's currently being play tested that may not make it into the final. Can I, can I just say one more thing while I'm can. thinking of it? Um, one of the other things, when you're, t when you're talking about how the, how the different virtues balance, one thing people haven't talked about yet is the different combinations of resources that they use yep. because they don't all use the same ratios of the resources, which is another... I can't believe no one has actually clued in on that at all yet. Well, well, it does several things. One of them is because each, each virtue has a different balance of which v resources they want, mm -hmm. that encourages people to trade and cooperate mm -hmm. because... I may well roll something that is more useful for Az. Also, the way in the costs of individual actions aren't always the same. So the cost of a fight one isn't the same if it's in Prudence's deck and Courage's deck. That means that the balance, that there's more subtlety in the balance of these actions because sometimes even if, even if you have an action, it's a very expensive way to get that effect where someone else might have a very inexpensive way to get that effect. So actually it becomes not just who has a fight yep. card they can use, but who has a good fight card or who has a cheap fight card mm -hmm. or who can get another fight card, who's got a fight card on their dashboard so it's not going to empty something because we've got other things we want to keep because we're preparing something else. So there's a bit, a, a lot of the, the, um, the, the, the grit and the interest in this is about the subtleties that you won't necessarily see when you first see it, first yep. play. And one thing we haven't yet shown, but we definitely will, is how Solomon dispatches of people like thugs and lightly, like numbered assailants that you can actually deal with very quickly because the fight zeros and fight ones become really useful when Solomon's up against a normal That's right. thug and not a nemesis. That's right. When you're fighting a nemesis, what you want is a big fight number because yep. you want to do lots of damage in one go. You want to do a really high score. But if you're fighting lots of people, being able to chop one guy into 17 pieces and then you can't do anything against his mates isn't nearly as useful as being able to do chop him into five pieces and then chop his mate into five <laughs> pieces and his other mate into five pieces. So <laughs> you've got what to does share he do? these. What does he do with the left he's got two, two left over. He's got two leftover pieces. <laughs> well, he saves them for later because he's thinking ahead. <laughs> he knows his bad Someone's guys. Someone's just going to get cut in half, not into <laughs> that's five. Like, no, that's um, because yeah, that's something we'll definitely show more of as well. Is is just the variety, and when you have to choose to use those higher strength uh, actions, yeah. will be really important. Okay, um, let's have a quick look through. I have more questions here. I'm just going down. Uh, um, Ali Batar said, "I believe that giving each virtue card a specific and thematic name can help the flow of the game and remember its function." Yes. Do you have plans for this? So absolutely. Yeah, Ali Batar. I mean, at the moment. It just says courage, and it just says courage, and it just says courage. But as you'll see, as we've developed things like the discovery decks, these wild blows with their narrative and related effect, and yeah. potentially related ongoing effect, depending on what's happened. Not all of these remain in play. Do they all? No, yeah, no, some, no, some, no, of no. some of them do. Some of them have instant effects. Some of them do. And a lot um, of them get replaced when the next one comes suspicious. out. Suspicious. 
Um, I love the suspicious card, actually. Um, uh, just an excuse for me to want to do my narration, my bedtime narration again. Um, so y I'll, let, well, I'll let you say more detail, but yes, well, yeah, they yeah, will. Basically, yeah, the, the answer is yes. Uh, I mean, the idea is that we will squash whatever background, color, flavor, whatever you want to call it, um, on, on the, the cards we can. The, the thing is, because we're still tweaking some of the mechanics, we, we want to put as much as we can on, so we're seeing what space we've got left once we put the rules on us. Yep. So yes, I think you're, you're quite right. Each of the cards, we were actually, Dale was talking about exactly this today, um, suggesting different names for different things, and we're, we're all down with that. That's, and and th what I want is basically every card that we can mm -hmm. will have some, some bit of background for Az to read out in his Stentorian voice. Um, yes, let me show this card for a second to give an idea of where we're going. So the, a fatal error um, specifically says, a clumsy attack leaves the warrior open and Solomon has no qualms about slipping his rapier between the attacker's ribs with a startled look on his face. The warrior slides to the ground dead and you remove the attacking warrior. This is a card that can actually, a discovery card that could actually come up if you've set yourself up in such a way that Solomon's able to outdo his attacker. Um, and then you have a future three different variations of fight, uh, but sorry, excuse me, of discovery cards that you may get once this has been resolved, which means you're going to evolve that fight given the actions that have happened previously. So if you stumble into a fight haphazardly or versus being hidden and actually get the initial points, it will not just affect the first fight or the first attack against you, but also the subsequent ones as well as yeah. the entire chapter evolves with each concurring test or action. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> object, yeah. object didn't correct me. I'm gonna be just gonna be happy and run with that. Um, let's see. Any more questions? Robert says, do the expansions come with additional rules, or are they completely covered by the main rulebook? They come with. Uh, th there's no extra rulebook. The only rules they will come with will be anything that is required for a specific scenario, which will be on a discovery card. Mm -hmm. There is one rulebook. It's in the core box, and everything else is on the cards. So could we get a Savannah, Africa, Heart of Africa card that says you're parched in this chapter and you're seeing an oasis in the distance yeah. that may or may not be true? Yeah, 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 absolutely. You've seen the hidden... Clarity uh, tests? Yeah, you've seen the, the hidden, uh, obviously, effect in the last playthrough where Son McCain starts hidden and that's a discovery card related to the chapter, again, potentially depending on what you did in the chapter before and how you enter that one. Um, I know you were explaining the rules, but can you do it again? I wasn't listening. Nope, you'll have to watch the, re you'll have to watch the replay. Um, Artem asked, and I'm not going to ignore this question. I think we need to answer everything, and any question that comes up, we should acknowledge it. Why is the pleasure mount goes down and not up? Well, there's a few different reasons. It's talked about at length. We did see some early birds drop up, drop off. Uh, the game is very, very different and very surprising, and I think a lot of people assume yeah. it's going to be a hack and slash dungeon crawler, and there's actually That's a lot right. more depth to it so it's some people have decided not to go in for it some have stayed and gone on overall we think we're actually trending up and we still have a lot more still to come and um, we have some stuff tomorrow that we, we, have, released. Tomorrow. Yep. we have some stuff on saturday coming and next week we have more as well yep. we have no plans we're already very very happy with the campaign and no chart or any little up or down numbers yeah we're, we're you know we've we go down slightly if we go down slightly from 700,000, 700 and something. 725,000. 725,000, that doesn't seem like a bad start. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, so yes, it may not be having just that perfect little bump up that everyone kind of maybe expects to see, but overall the support we've had from every single one of you backers and, has and been great. I think it's one of those things, it, it's a combination of different things. One of the things, as, as, as was saying, it's it's a different game. It's I mean, but Leo has, has said innovative, it's, it's not the standard, Kick the door open, kill the monster, take the loot kind of kind of dungeon bash kind of approach, because that has been done many many times, and um, we thought we'd do something a little bit different, a bit more in keeping with the the stories, mm -hmm. uh, because Solomon doesn't do that. No. It's not it's not what he does. It's not how it fits. It wouldn't really be very very uh, appropriate for for the stories. Yeah. So we tried to find something that's more appropriate for the stories, and and I think there's a, there was a confusion. It's it's. It is hard to explain how. <laughs> it's very frustratingly difficult to explain without you playing. When you play it, you get it. I mean, everybody, this is the thing. Is when we take, we take it to shows, and we've had the ambassadors take it to shows, and we've played hundreds and hundreds of games, and 
uh, there's a couple of people who've, who've sat down and gone, oh, I thought it was going to be a skirmish game, and it's not, so they, they walk off. And that's fine, because they, they don't want to play this kind of game. But they, the absolutely overwhelming response of the people who have played it, and every, we get ambassadors send us reports whenever they do a, uh, demonstrations, and, and they always say the same thing. They always say, everybody loved it, everybody was amazed, everybody kept saying how innovative it and different, and it was fresh, you know, fresh that it was not the same thing they got a hundred times. Who was it who was on the comments saying, I've got 570 games and this one doesn't feel like any of them? <laughs> Which is... And you go, that's just, just lovely, because yeah. I think they kind of, you know, they kind of get that it's something a little bit different and we're trying something different. And so, but it's not a million miles away from things. It's yeah. just sufficiently not quite the same to be, uh, to be on the one hand, fascinating and, 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 and very attractive for some people, but also a little bit worrying and not quite what they're after yeah. for others. Marmite? But yeah, we have we have talked. We have about talked about this being Solomon a little bit of a marmite. This, 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 yeah. Marmite, yeah. Solomon Cain flavor marmite. But we, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, when you eat marmite, when you play you it, know, yeah. When you play it, most people. The, re the reaction we've had, as I said, from the demo kits. And the, I mean, the demo kits are an old version of this. This is, I think, this is significant. The rules you got today, much better than the ones we're playing in the demo kit. There's lots of little tweaks and twiddles, and and some quite big ones. Um, the way the tests are done, the discovery cards, there's no yeah. discovery cards in the demo kit. This is loads better. And people still love the demo kit version. Apparently, I was meant to do a topless spoiler. Really? Um, I don't, I don't remember You don't that. remember that bit. I don't bit. remember the topless you spoiler. You don't remember, I don't that, remember bit. that at yeah. all. Um, Lawrence asked, uh, is it possible to get a sun drop option in the pledge manager? First of all, I don't know if Awaken Realms have that term sun drop they, yeah, I don't copyright know that, or registered. Yeah. That is something that definitely suits things like metallic aliens or things that can just be uh, primed and then maybe zenith or airbrushed quickly with a kind of splash of colour. And I love what Amer Awaken Realms did with that. I think their um, their aliens it was very clever. invaders. I, I think uh, Nemesis. Yeah, Nemesis. I think, the um, Nemesis. I think Nemesis works really well. It looks so. What the because we're focused so much on characters and detail and personality and the facial features to do that to these to me doesn't make sense. I think yeah I think we, we've got gorillas and young girls and 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 pirates and yep. soldiers and and virtues and there's just so many different things it's hard to see how you because you're, you're going from you armor kind of, to leather to, to bare skin to, to also I, I think it I think what we have is very varied and it's it's hard to think of a a, a, a good way of approaching this that was going to but I mean, you know, and again, it's it's something that we hadn't really. And the Awakened Realms uh, started out as a painting studio, mm -hmm. so they're very much focused on that kind uh, of thing. Fantastic, and, and, they, and I think, are. yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, and they, they, uh, and you can see how they 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 got to this. You know, we want to be able to deliver a kind of at least a base value painted. Yep. And I think Sun Drop's great, but it's not really what we didn't come from that background. Intruder, thank you. Intruder was the word I was looking for. I said invader and I couldn't, I knew that wasn't right. It, oh. uh, the intruders in Nemesis is what they're called. Great, great name. But yes, I, I love what they do. But I think for us, they because of the scenic bases and because of just how individual every single character is, you'll not have any trouble telling the difference straight out of the box. If you want to then go on and paint it, absolutely. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, so, my goodness, we still got a few more questions. Okay, so Moshi said, I am, are all chapters Hello, easy, medium, and hard? Or, uh, or, yeah. or are the chapters parallel? Para 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 <laughs> do they do that P thing? Parallelly different. <laughs> what I mean is, when you do pearly in a chapter, does it make the rest of the adventure harder or just different? Is there any reason to do things differently if you did well the first time you played an adventure? I'll expand on this question a little bit more as well because I've seen it in the comments. If I do really well the first time I play through and I happen to do really well again the second play through, could I still have another path if I make a choice or something happens? I think that, well, it depends on the story is the answer because, well, well, well one part of the answer is it depends on the story because the, the stories branch and weave in different ways. Howard's stories don't all have the same structure. So we don't all have, have the same structure in, in, in our replications of them. Sometimes you have a uh, very clear decision point where you, you either by your actions or by your choice, you go one path or you go a different path. And in those cases, for however long those paths run parallel, uh, which is sometimes a long time and sometimes the whole, the whole story, and it's sometimes not that long and then it comes back again and joins up again. Sometimes it makes a huge difference. Sometimes characters die that you could have rescued if you'd gone the other way. 
So obviously thereafter that character is not involved. So that makes a huge difference, can make a huge difference. Sometimes it's a, a more minor difference, as I said, it's, it's, it's what's appropriate to the story. Sometimes there are two paths, sometimes each of those paths may then branch again. So you're down paths within paths. So it's, it's what fits the story. The, the shorter stories are less branched than the bigger ones because you can have, there's, there's not the room in the kind of plot to, to go in nine different directions. Yeah. Whereas if you've got something very long and very convoluted, then, then you, you can be quite intricate with it. But I think it's fair to say, even if you do have two potential options or even three potential options, they're not necessarily easy, medium, and hard. They could all be No, 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 difficult. I mean, it, they, they, they can be difficult. They, they can all be kind of similarly difficult. You can have, there are one or two times where there are uh, two different endings that are both what you could call successes, but they're different. Mm -hmm. And it depends on, you, know, you can pick and choose which one you prefer, which one you think is the better success, yep. but they're, you can have kind of parallel ways of winning that aren't the same. Yep. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is that question assumes that the only value in the game is in telling the story, mm -hmm. which I don't think is true. Having it, when you play test stuff, you tend to play the same thing an awful lot of times. And if I did this and it was really, really boring after I played it once and I knew the story, then I would go insane. <laughs> more insane. Even right, more yes. insane. So we, what, what, we, what I've done is I've made a game that I think is enjoyable to play, even when you know the story. Even if you knew all the story really well, which of course I do because I wrote the cards. So I know the story really well and I've played it with, with the guys and it's an interesting it's an interesting puzzle, like a lot of games are puzzles, where, where you're trying to work out how to get through a certain series of challenges with limited resources, with some randomness involved, with other people doing things you wouldn't, you know, in your cooperative group, you wouldn't necessarily have chosen yourself. All of that and having the banter and the, the planning and the experience of the whole thing. Something Ben said the other day, it's not just a story, there's a real game here as yeah. well. And I think that's something that, that we're kind of losing in the focus on talking about the story, is that actually, even though you know it, it's like Pandemic. You can yeah. tell, you can play Pandemic. You know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen in Pandemic. You know, Pandemic is a really simple story in terms of the broad strokes. You know what's going on. And there's two ways it can end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and yet you can play it any number of times. And I think that, that because the game itself is interesting, the mechanics of how you play, is interesting and I think that applies here as well even if you know the story the mechanism the puzzle of playing and resolving that with your friends in this particular combination and when we're talking about the difference in the in different virtues playing as a different virtue means your role in that puzzle solving becomes very different and when you play with different numbers of people if you play the game with four player as justice and you play the next one three player as prudence that would be a very different very experience, different. Yeah, yeah. even if you knew the story. It would, the game itself would, would throw up a lot of quite different challenges. So I think there's a, there's a lot of replay value, and I can't remember what the original question was. That's all right. That's, abs <laughs> that's absolutely fine. I'm sure there was an answer in there somewhere. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. Please, again, do pop the questions in the Q&A, guys. We've been going for an hour and a half already. Okay. Very well, we're nearing Leo levels of... Oh. Uh, of stamina here. Uh, yes, that was oh, about easy, medium, we have to hard. Do two, two minute 31 or something? Is yeah, if anyone doesn't know, as the technical guy behind the scenes, going over two hours is particularly painful for me. Uh, as you all know, when you try and watch the replays, you only get two hours worth of replay, and then the other one just mysteriously disappears, um, which you can only really easily get to by watching the last 10 seconds of the first two hours, and then it loads the next one, which is the trick if you need to find it. Uh, <laughs> Marcel's snuck a question in, but I feel like it's relevant for what we've just talked about mm -hmm. with the diverging chapters and the okay. difficulty. He said, is there a thing like permanent death if you feel a story miserably and you have to start all over? So if you're halfway through an act and something terrible happens, are you there, done? There are, I, I mean, I don't know whether we think of it as permanent death or not. There are definitely instances where you can get halfway through something and, and s get so far down the monumentally awful end of the, the threads that you just lose because you get overwhelmed and, and, yep. and drop down the UBA and eaten by cannibals and all the rest of it. I mean, we, we tend to try, we try and give people 
two or three heavily telegraphed warnings that they really need to get their act together <laughs> before we just say, no, you've lost. Get your act together. Anyone get the pun? Anyone get the, no, get your act together? No, nobody? Moving swiftly. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> So yeah, you, you won't just be playing it and you go, oh, that's, just, that's not a very good result. Oh, you're dead. Um, no, it, it, it will make it very obvious that you know, you're in the cooking pot and the cannibals are lighting the fire, or you're in the jail and they're just about sharpening the ax for chopping your head off, and yeah. you get a go at getting out. But I mean, to get to that point, you, yeah, you've you probably to, messed yeah. up repeatedly anyway. Um, Lewis Roberts said, I like how the Discovery deck uh, sorry, excuse me, the Discovery cards work, but was wondering if you thought about a mini book instead of during instead of this during the design process. Not sure how this would work for keep and play cards, though. So I maybe think well, of something like yeah, the I mean Trail House in the Hill. Or yeah, I mean, I think the, 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 this war of mine is what's come up a few oh, times yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so on. So I, I think uh, the answer I've been giving that to people uh, when I've been talking about this last night or this morning or whenever it was when I was on the comments, well, yeah, this morning, it's seven o'clock in the morning. Um, we had a long conversation about this, and it was um, the, the the thinking I had was when we when we played um, when you play a game and you're really involved and you're kind of in the flow of it, you're kind of in this little bubble mm -hmm. that that you're sort of collectively you know you've got the board, you've got everybody in this kind of little bubble, and when you've got a deck of cards, you can kind of go right, oh, we need we need number seventy three. There you go, there's number seventy three, and it's and it's kind of all kind of around. Even when they're big stacks of cards, they're sort of easily accessible. And I found that the playing with games, not, not just this war of mine, but the other games that have big, big books where you look stuff up, they don't fit on the table. They end up kind of un under the table or over here or something. And it kind of breaks that bubble. It becomes one person's job. They it becomes to, they one person's job has to, has to have it. And, and it kind of, read it or it's almost like something it kind of intrudes to the bubble out from yeah. outside. But A, you can't do the remains in play easily. Um, and, and B, there's this kind of utility, this, this ease with using a card that sits there and it's, even if this is a discovery card, in the middle of a fight, it will replace the previous one. It goes on. It's just easy, it's there, it's, it's not terribly intrusive. I just prefer them, I think they, they work better. This is one of those l real detailed little subtleties yeah. about this whole idea of the bubble that you, you kind of this zone that you're in and that intruding, you know, things intrude from outside and they break that moment. Yeah. Okay. I've just bought myself a copy of this War of Mine, by the way, so I'm not, dis <laughs> I'm not dissing that in any way. Um, but um, it's, it's this thing about, it's one of the reasons I thought of thinking about games too much, probably. But the. There's, there's a carry on question. There's a carry on question. Okay. Here, but Sorry. Asked a different question. Talking okay. about expansions and space, time, material consuming things. Space, time, um, continuum. Yeah, continuum. Um, could you share thoughts and reasons behind a choice from a board game design perspective? Was it a difficult one? Which is saying, if on one hand it's potentially infinitely expandable. Hold on a second. Going to have to start from the start. This is a question I need to take time with. Gabriel, hold on. Is there a first part to this question? Oh, oh, oh there's a whole. I had to scroll up. There's a whole. There's a, it's, not, it's, it's broken the space time Kickstarter window. It seems that the Discovery Card system is a very clever choice. Well done. Thank you very much. They can be adapted to almost anything from train effects to equipment to particular actions to storylines. It's also particularly fitting for future expansions. But exclamation marks, ex big letters. It <laughs> isn't it a very, very space time material consuming system. If on one hand it is potentially infinitely expandable, infinitely is, is, is a big word, but all right. <laughs> on the other hand, it could end up in a super huge number of cars, many of which are rarely used. Could you share some thoughts and reasons behind this choice from a board game design point of view? Was it a difficult one? I kind of half answered that already because of the thing about the book and the yeah. and the and, and I've I've played games with books, uh, and I I find them just a little bit clumsy because it's I've got I've got my my dashboard my cards my pieces and the, and I tend not to have a place for a, quite a big book that isn't room it's just an intrusion and then I have to stick it somewhere out of the way so it's just not very convenient if I'm you playing solo. Them. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm playing solo, then that's actually it works yep. much better because I've got, yes, I haven't got yeah. these other pesky humans yep. in the way and I can just kind of spread out stuff everywhere. I, what I love, and I didn't think about this until I think we had done the vampires, um, we released the vampires expansion to everybody, is I like the idea that your act and your, your adventure that you're about to play and you chunk down 
you get 100 discovery cards for mm. that act or for that adventure, yep. and you just go boom. This is now, so, I ca so you don't need to have a book, because you imagine how big the book would be. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. With all the acts, there yeah, would be over yeah. 30 acts, and uh, the book would be massive, but you've got this unique thing, and you may, as you guys say, only see 30, 40, maybe 50 cards, you may only see half of this deck, yeah. and you know that it's, it's like that fight and fantasy book thing where yeah, you, yeah. you don't see it all and you go back and do the you game play because the game, you want yeah. to see the rest. Yeah. And that's why I particularly like the cards in that instance. The only thing better than that is that when we when we release our short novels that we're going to do, our, dis our, our discovery, discovery novels, our novels <laughs> 30 different short novels. I thought you were going to say app there. No. no. <laughs> uh, as any of you who may know from my Beast of War days, I'm fervently against dyes and apps and all these fantastic amazing wonderful great systems that they are because they replace the as's in your gaming group say no to apps <laughs> replacing <laughs> as's. <laughs> um no i think i think they're fantastic but there's something that removes you from the gameplay a little at times although yeah. i am for uh solomon Kane's soundtrack if there's any budding artists out there want to get in touch i think you know i think are. it's i think it's uh, it, where you know time and place i think I've, I've played some games with apps that work quite well mm -hmm. Um, I thought the XCOM app wasn't bad. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't mm. awful, but I thought like, we, you know I could see it fitted and so on. I didn't like the Imperial Assault app because I was the Imperial player in my company right. and I quite enjoyed being able to tweak the difficulty and give them challenges right. without over you know, running and. I, th I thought the 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 U boat the, the, the Kickstarter U boat one but that, that's amazing. I haven't seen that. You have, haven't yeah. You? I had the periscope and you can actually yeah. look around. So and, I thought and that oh. that looked like they'd done a nice job yep. of integrating that. So I think I can see how sometimes apps work really well. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's one of those things where it, it becomes a kind of, oh, we've got to have an app, we've got to have an app, and you, people just kind of crowbar it in, whatever. Yeah. And there are times when you need to, you know, clone as and have him do all the narration for you. Oh, don't even tell me. Don't even tell me. Uh, actually, do you know what I'm going to, because if we hit 500, if we hit 500, we're eight away, seven away, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a spoiler about some voice recording that was done earlier this week. If we hit 500 viewers. Oh. If we do. So we'll just oh, for that. Jacob Thompson said, uh, how is the Hello, save Jake. box uh, going to work? Is it possible? That was very radio. Should I do that? Jacob Thompson calls in. From Oakland, Illinois. Or go on, say, Hello, Hi, Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> Need to give you a moment. Uh, is it possible to have two I've games... I've got corpse when he's in it. Yeah. <laughs> how is the save box going to work? Is it possible to have two games running and saved in case you play one with a group, another one in solo, for example? I think this was asked uh, before. We're, I think we can definitely make something. Well, this this is a this was a, again something that came up last night, and and I th in the comment, <coughs> and I think we we haven't thought that people would want to do that. So the way it was originally set up was so that you save a game. <coughs> Excuse me, you save a game, and that's sorry, Marcel just caught me. Open up an extra browser, quick! Open up extra windows. <laughs> no cheating! No cheating! Uh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, I see. Right? Uh, no, so the idea was originally that the, the expectation was that you would want to save a, a game. Mm -hmm. and, and so it was about you play a game, you get to a certain point, you can, you can play for two hours that evening, you play your two hours, you get to the end of a chapter, you save that, next week you come back with the same sort of gaming group and you, you start where you left mm -hmm. off. That was the idea. Now, having said that, the, what we've done, we could actually make it so that you could save more than one. Yep. The thing is, we wouldn't then need the save box mm -hmm. if we did that. Yep. And, but actually, I really like that idea that you could yep. say, and, and, and then actually, if you do that, you, so you say you've got this game that you're playing with your gaming group, and you've got this other game that you're playing solo, and you've got this other game that you're playing with a different gaming group. And what that means is, I can see what people will do with it is, is what you do with computer games, yeah. where you go, I get to this point in the branching point in the story and I save it here. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm worried what's about to happen. Because what I'm going to do, I'm then going to go over yeah. this down this path, yeah. and I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to come back to the save point, and then I'm going to go down that one to do the other <laughs> path as well. And I can see people, and they're going, oh, this is a really big fight. I'm going to just save it here yeah. <laughs> in case I get dead. Yes, the difficulty, I can see yeah. people doing all that, and I don't yeah. mind that. I think that, that's that's going to you know whatever whatever works. Yes, yeah, so I think we'd love to do that. Um, the, the, the difficulty is you're responsible for your own save game in this. If you're going to go ahead a chapter and something horrible happens and you decide to reload the last save point, that's on you. You're you're yeah, handling yeah, your own that's, experience. Yeah, yeah that's that's, um, that's right, and that's not what was intended. I mean, the thing the thing that makes me think twice about it is I don't know how people feel about the idea that we've said there'll be a save box, and then we say actually well there isn't a save box because there's no point 
If we change it so you can have multiple saves, there's no need for a save box. So it's just a thing less. We'll just make the pad bigger. Yeah, we will. This is it. We will look to try and mock something up for you guys soon. But in essence, you're just really saving some key stats, things like yeah, the, you're the, you're the tracks. You're saving things like things like the tracks, uh, which you probably can't see unless you little change little the, the, okay, well, well, the, the, the tracks. The tracks will be at a certain value, and that's important in the game. Um, so you need to save how that, how, you know, where they are. The idea of the originally the idea was you would take some of the cards that you had in your hand, for example, and put them in the box. So that would be an easy way of finding what you had. But then you can't save it again because you've put some of the cards in the yeah. box. Yeah. So and this is like virtue cards and so on. So you're going to need those. It's, if it was just some of the, uh, the discovery cards, you probably wouldn't need them again if you played a different scenario. But you will always need the virtue cards. So that stops you the way we were going to do it that stops you doing saving it twice but we can expand on the save pad so you can save it twice but then you don't need the, the yeah. box so i think possibly we may we may do an update and, and change yeah. that we haven't had a conversation about this yet that, but that's a community driven suggestion that's, that's that we didn't think that, of yeah, as i said uh, we didn't we didn't think about that we were going to save one thing um but several people have said it and i think it's a neat idea yep yeah. we, we will take it um, away and we will work on it yeah uh mark asks who created the art for the tiles uh, it's a chap called Carl Art. He did the art for a lot of Mythic Battles Pantheon. He did a bunch of yeah. He did art for Mythic Battles Pantheon, and uh, I think he did some stuff for Joan of Arc, mm -hmm. but I can't remember what. I can't remember either. I think he did some stuff. For that. Oh, we we hit five hundred people for literally like a second, and it went down. So it's uh, too quick. It's too quick. No, too quick. Um, can we have blue dice? Says Shark. Shark was checking out like, our Instagram like today, by the way. She was having a little look at this gorgeousness. Uh, Shark, I saw you on Instagram. Uh, uh, Leo's got the most liked picture on Instagram right now, which makes me really sad. I mean, he is holding painted by Seb Levine oh, that virtues, one. Yeah, yeah, but it's that by one. far our most liked picture on Instagram. I really would like to outdo Leo at something. I can't well, outdo him at to, spoiling or you have hair. To, you have it, to get a picture yeah. cuddling <gasps> virtues or something. No, I didn't see the 500. Oh, there's the 500. There's the 500. Oh, there's the 500. Oh, 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 a lot of compliments on our trailer. Um, our trailer was was epic. Our trailer was um, done by our in-house video team. Um, a couple of people in particular um, who worked very, very long, long time on it and did a fantastic job of the trailer. And all I'm going to say is a member of the team has been doing some voice recordings for something we could be bringing out in the next week or so. Uh, I had to listen. I had to listen to some voice recordings to choose which one I thought would be the best. Um, and we thought it'd be interesting when you guys get to hear it to see if you can work out who it is in the team that was doing the voice recordings. That's all I'm going to say. I can't do. We had to do. Uh, it was quite fun listening to all the tests. It's interesting when you're doing recordings of yourself. You do accidentally start putting phlegm in because you enunciate everything a little bit more. You say everything with a little bit more kind of inflection and a little bit more, and you end up kind of <laughs> doing it's things you don't normally do. When it's, all, it's also strange. I, 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 I'll tell you now, and you'll, this will be obvious as soon as you hear it, that it wasn't me who was doing it. But, I don't um, know. You, but I have, have, I, have, I, have done, I have done similar things before. And one of the things I always found is, you, and, and I didn't think of this until afterwards because I didn't see the film until afterwards, but I, I sort of feel like you're going, you're just sitting there going, I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> I'm Groot. <laughs> because you're saying the same, you're trying to say the same yeah. kind of tiny phrase yeah. in 52 different mm -hmm. ways. And it just, I thought, yeah. So there you go. You have to keep an eye for that one. You'll know it when you see it or in this case, hear, hear it. it. Um, oh, so a couple more questions left and then we're going to wrap this up. We've been going for quite a long time now. Um, back to Shark's question. Can we have, uh, one hour 40, uh, can we have blue dice? The dice have been a point of discussion pretty actively actually. Everybody has an opinion Everybody on dice. Everybody has an opinion on dice. See, I, I like, my, my original vision for the dice was thinking in a kind of Puritan sense, mm -hmm. was that we would have black dice with white icons. Okay. Um, because I thought that was, that was very fitting for Solomon because he's a somewhat po-faced fellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they're striking and they're easy to see. And that if you put them again next to the white mercy cubes, it should be quite striking. Anyway, so we, all, we then we got these wooden ones, which were purely for which were, which were the for prototyping, which was just because it was a convenient way to get these things done quickly. Yeah. Um, I love them. I and, genuinely and they're quite love nice. Them. 
Um, and a lot of people think, oh, wooden ones, uh, that's, that's quite interesting. They are unfortunately rather, rather costly. Yes, um, we did get them priced. We did get them priced. We got a lot of pos positive feedback on the wood yeah, price. So, so they're, they are quite costly compared to the, uh, the original idea we had. Um, and then, then because the virtues were painted blue, people started saying, go come here, blue ones. Mm -hmm. But that might not necessarily. So, um, <laughs> we we kind of have multiple options yeah. now. It's all a little bit tricky. So I would I still like the the Puritan cleanliness that, that is very Solomon Cain to me. It just feels very much kind of what would Solomon Cain choose? And I think he would choose the <laughs> simplest thing possible. Sean, I'm not sure if it was Sean that shared it with me a few days ago. The, to be honest, hours, days, and weeks go out the window when you're in a Kickstarter campaign. It just becomes the campaign. Um, it said scrimshaw dice, and I think scrimshaw I dice. And my goodness, scrimshaw dice are gorgeous. They're they're kind of like that bone kind of. Yeah, I know yeah. scrimshaw. Yeah, um, yeah. I saw them and they blew me away. But I cannot even imagine the cost of that. Well, if they it was even would manufactured not on mass. Be cheap. Because yeah. we need, you know, what there's there's what five thousand eight hundred of you guys times fifteen dice. Yeah, fifteen pounds. That's gotta be a lot what? of scrimshaw dice. That's a lot of anything. Um, so. I don't know. I, I can't. I can't tell you if the wooden dice are going to be an add-on or not because we, we did get them priced and they're kind of they're kind of awkward. Um, but if there, if there's something in particular you would really like as ever, just comment. We are we are listening. The blue I like the idea of, but it's worth saying that we might all the virtues might not end up being blue. Uh, yes, uh, the the virtues being blue is something that is. There's an aesthetic versus gameplay thing, and it's a fine balance between keeping things looking pretty from an artistic point of view and making things really easy and quick and understandable yeah. and, and legible. Um, so we're actually still in talks about that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And and uh, I mean the things. I mean, there's another while we're talking about dice, the symbology on the dice. Will it remain like this? Mm -hmm. Will it be different? Yeah. It's it's tricky because you want something that is very very clear. Uh, and, and easy to spot, whichever way up it goes, yeah. and all of these other things, uh, which these are, but they're not yeah. terribly beautified. And they could be more beautified, but the problem is as soon as you start going that direction, they start becoming less legible, less clear, less easy to reach, yeah. and it's, you know, but, and, and so, you know, it's, it's not actually <laughs> finally decided yet. Uh, Jacob just said, just make a big dice add-on with all the different types. It's like, <laughs> just 500 different dice. Um, we could. So I mean, people do do entire kickstarters of dice, so there's yeah. plenty of plenty of options uh, and plenty of plenty of different yeah. versions we could do. Uh, Karina and I actually just backed some dice. We just, um, well, I say back, she needed to add an extra set of dice on to complete her six dice or four dice set, whatever it was. So I got a full set of dice on my way. Don't know when they're going to arrive. Be a year away. So are these are these made of <laughs> these are finest rhinosaur well, plastic, but very Pla pretty plastic. Well, with pretty, a very, pretty I think it was like alpha steel wool from Mountain Blue or something like that. It was an epic name. The name won me over like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's glaze over before you say anything. Xetra <laughs> says, will there be discovery tokens that you have to explore when you enter an area such as a triggered trap? Uh, there are, there are, I mean, explore tokens is another thing where explore tokens can be anything. So um, they are, they can be someone hidden in the grass, they can be a secret door in a cave, they can be footprints, clues, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and they can trig I either trigger uh, actions from miniatures. I mean, some of them put miniatures on the board. Some of them cause immediate kind of attacks if it was a trap. Um, so I don't think we need separate. Th we already have the tokens, as it were. We don't need a discovery token because that's kind of is a yep. what an explore token is. Um, so yes, we can definitely have that flexibility with the discovery cards and the explore tokens the way they are. Um, yeah, forgive me guys that I can't highlight the questions unfortunately, just the very nature that we're streaming from a device over yonder, over there, and actually I'm reading your comments here, which unfortunately doesn't let me bring your questions up, but we do have some more. Um, Shark again asked, these blue tiles are in the core game or is it an add-on? These are for, what are they for? Oh, they're for, um, yes, they're in the core game now because we gave you this for free. It was the... Death Black Riders. Death Black Riders uh, expansion. There you go. Answers that. Um, can we have a Chinese version? Um, it will not be a printed Chinese version, unfortunately, but we have kind of agreed that we will definitely be looking to share the templates of the cards and stuff out. Yeah, so we can get um, fan, fan versions of, yes. of this in, in any language anyone is willing to, uh, willing um, to do. So if you're interested in that, 
who should they contact? Uh, I think they need to wait a bit. I think yeah. we, we, we will we will we deal with that properly after the uh, after the Kickstarter. Well, once we know how many cards there are, <laughs> which would be really good to know before we can, so we can try and work out just how long we need to make all that happen. I think anybody saying yes, we'll help with the translation needs to yeah. realise how big the task there, is before there's we kind an of awful say. Lot of text in there. Um, it, it would be very simple for us to say, yep, we'll do a translation to you guys now, but. We don't want to say anything until we can absolutely guarantee it, which means we need yeah. time to realize where the game, the campaign ends, and then we can talk to people. I think in, in principle, giving you blank templates and stuff to work on is is fine. That's not that's not an issue. We're quite happy with people doing doing that kind of thing. There's a lovely BTG thread actually about people talking about making their own adventures. I was going to say, and also not just translations. It's 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 you know make your own adventures. So we will we will be provide. I think we can say we'll be providing. Uh, sort of blank chapter card templates and some blank event card templates and whatever it is that you you know want to go and have a go. I have a killer question yeah. for you here from Sindras. I don't know if you're going to be willing to show this or tell this just yet, but what is Providence's aura? Can we tell that yet? Mm, not saying. No, I don't think we can. We definitely would like to get some solo uh, play I'm, experience. I'm, I'm, so afraid, yeah. I'm afraid I'm not Mr. Spoiler. Sorry guys, I don't actually know. If I knew, I would probably tease, <laughs> but I actually don't know what it is. Why uh, do you think I've not told him yet? <laughs> so mean, so mean. Uh, Dublar says, when we get stuck with a not complete adventure, will you bring them in add-ons or pledge managers? Guys, you made something new. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Oh, you mean when we get, if we get halfway through a stretch goal adventure? Uh, is that what you mean? I think that's I think what Dublar so. means. Yes, if there's so something that ends up not complete on the stretch goals, what will we do? I don't know. Um, it, it cross seems that bridge when we come yeah, to it. Yeah, we'll cross that. Well, yeah, we'll, think, we'll, we'll burn that bridge when we come to I it. I think you know what we're like here. I, the, yeah, um, I think probably it's we'll easy to guess what we'll do, but I, we, we can burn that bridge when we come to it. Um, Dorthorian actually talks about let's plays and did say even several short ones dealing with particular aspects. I believe these will help generate interest. <laughs> Question: Do players with beards <laughs> get bonus rerolls? Um, so yeah, Dorthorian, the, the short aspects thing is something I alluded to earlier was something we had planned to do. Um, but due to everyone's feedback, we're going to be doing a slightly yeah. bigger Let's Play um, with the Blue Flame Revenge. It's actually one of the uh, core box scenarios. And we're going to go through and do a few of those chapters with a bit of a mix of things that are going on. So you guys can get a feel for that. And we're going to try and do that in super high quality if we can. We've got some more video testing to do before then as well. Because um, yes, we, we think that the, the rule book is now out there. Um, so people can get a, a their teeth into that. And then we'll start answering those questions. And hopefully by the time that kind of wraps up, we can look at getting some more Let's Play content out. Uh, Leif Stenson, terrible pronunciation, I'm sure. Follow-up question about save games. Mm -hmm. If the Virtue Cards, and so thank you so much for all your questions, guys. These are really epic. This is showing me right now, in a way. Mm -hmm. Having Leo live is fantastic, because he's just so brimming with energy and gorgeous new shinies, and I love it. But the questions you guys have been asking have helped make this really interesting, and having Jack here to, to get involved with these is, is perfect. These are such great, uh, questions for Jack to get involved in. So thank you for taking the time to write such great questions. Um, so if the Virtue cards are the only generic, non-scenario specific cards that go into the save box, maybe an idea could be to provide an add-on with extra save box and Virtue cards. So a second save box, second set of Virtue cards as an add-on. One way to do it. We theoretically, don't, yeah. yeah. We need, you, you, theoretically, you could do that. We um, we definitely don't want to needlessly charge you guys for things that we could somehow you know make work. But that is but that's absolutely the thing, is an option. If you if you can if you can do it without needing anything, and then give everybody the for no more money, you give everybody yeah. the ability to do to do that anyway. Yeah. I would rather do that. I would rather say just <laughs> every we let people save multiple times without any more cost. I think that sounds like a better version. Don't you? Yes, I do. Sorry, I got distracted. You, you, I got distracted. What are you reading? No, it? you're not allowed to see. I'm not allowed to see. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just got the edited highlights. Stop giggling. Tell me what <laughs> the question is. Okay. Well, see, the start of the question says, for as, specifically. All right. And then it starts with, just pretend. I'm not sure if I can really. So everybody can go look in the Q&A and read Gabriel's question, but I don't want to tell a chick. I don't know. Gabriel suggested I should pretend that I'm reading a super long, ab absurd question that involves dice building mechanic, kangaroos, and global market economy, which to me is some sort of, I imagine, I'm, it's my head went to kangaroos driving different. lorries that are carrying livestock that they've got to deliver around the globe, and you would roll dice for staying awake and eating, what do kangaroos eat, leaves? 
and you'd have a little baby joy that would drive the steering wheel whenever you needed to sleep. Your wee baby joy would do it. Uh, you'd roll for a successful kangaroo police traffic cop dodging. There you go, Gabriel. There's your super <laughs> dice building kangaroo global market economy question. Was there a question in there? Uh, no. It was just a wind up. It's just a wind up. Uh, McGilligan. That's, I don't know if that's right, but in Irish, that's how I would say it. Uh, McGilligan. Hi, have you considered designing the adventure track board as an adventure track dashboard with dials instead for saving some table space? Do we mean, oh, we mean that. Let me grab that. Oh, you can show it. Oh, I can put it justice there. Let's be very gentle. So I think what uh, McGilligan is referring to is the virtue track, which we can show that way. that way. There you go. There, there. Um, so which is currently still being worked on. We definitely think this can be reduced in size. You know, we're, we're obviously experimenting a little with kind of putting some nice art on it. We know at the moment these sort of um, modifiers are sort of duplicated across the four, so we can do something to improve on that. Yeah. And you can see the evidence of obviously us testing some of the colors to work out what's better for readability and, and actually playing the game. So could we swap that up for something like dials? I don't know, it seems like an awful FFG thing to do, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's not it lie. Seems, uh, yeah, we're I, not I, playing X-Wing here. Would Solomon <laughs> use dials? That's a question. Would Solomon use Ooh, dials? Ooh, rotating cardboard. Oh, work with the devil. Work with the devil. <laughs> Papist nonsense. Um, I mean, yes, we, we definitely could. <laughs> Mark says, no, he wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> um, I, think, I think Solomon would imagine it was, it was, uh, it was paper, potpourri. Black magic. Potpourri and black magic, and, and he wouldn't have none of it. Not potpourri? Potpourri. What's the difference between potpourri and potpourri? The smell? Or I think it's the smell. Okay, okay. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've never stood that close to the, his, his, uh, his imperial papacy. <laughs> Maybe. His does, holiness. Does the, the holiness pope, smell like potpourri? Is it? I don't know. What do popes smell of? I feel like we should just end the stream there. Answers on a postcard. I don't think. To the usual address. <laughs> um, let's have a quick. I think. Oh my goodness, I think we are questioned out. I'm just going to skip through again because my Kickstarter has been a little bit quirky this evening. Um, but so, I so, think so that one you skipped is another joke, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get all the fun. Uh, will the tiles be numbered? Yeah, we talked about that one. Tiles Don't will be numbered. Cards, uh, will, cards are already individually, uh, individually individual. tagged, so you can yes. find out which one's which. All right, guys. So when I need to say card 723 needs a change in this bit, we can actually find it. With uh, new, new social stretch goals, someone sniff the Pope and post your findings. If someone can get a <laughs> selfie <laughs> or a picture with the other person sniffing, sniffing the, the Pope, Pope, that's not photoshopped. They've got to be, you got to be holding the day's Photoshop. newspaper or something. Yeah, you got to be. I'm sure we could we could work something out for that. I'm I, sure I, we think, could yeah, I think that. Uh, Moldy wine and cheap woman's perfume. That's awfully specific, G. <laughs> <Reno>. um, <laughs> That's that was. Oh my goodness. I almost high-fived the Pope when I was in Rome, but didn't want to get beaten to hell by the Swiss guard. Did he raise a high-five to you, Mark? Is that what happened? Did maybe, he maybe that was not um, quite what he was trying to do. Uh, he's like, please go away. Uh, you're <laughs> awfully close to me. Um, Sun's in my eyes. Um, actually, um, Mark says he missed the ex a different Mark says he missed the explanation of the mercy and the luck cubes before, and there's nothing currently in the rule book. Um, That's true. Yes. That is true. So can we do a description of this? Yes, those? sure, sure. Um, Mercy and Luck Cubes are another limited resource that are, again, ways of adding a little bit of character, a little bit of, of um, interplay between the players. And they also both coincidentally make life a bit easier, but we're going to fix that. <laughs> they, what they are is that you get, you get these, you earn these uh, through various different... Uh, interactions tends to be that you get luck cubes when you do a really good result on a chapter. You get a reward yep. of, a, of a luck cube, uh, and occasionally in, in the discovery cards you get you get luck cubes for you know fluking something, mm -hmm. um, and you get uh, mercy cubes from as a sort of recompense for particularly horrible cards that that are really 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 mean. Yeah. So it's a kind of one hand gives and the other hand <laughs> punches you in the head <laughs> repeatedly. Um, so, so what you do is you get these, you get these, and you earn them as a group. You don't earn them individually. You earn them collectively, and then you have to decide who gets who gets to have it. And when you get a luck cube, you put that on your uh, reserve area. 
you have to have a space to put the flat cube. And then you can spend it at some later point when you do an action and you, you take a, a card as a random, a random value to go to a test. You can choose to spend the luck cube and take a second card and take the better number. So it, it gives you a, you know, when you really, really, really absolutely must do this test properly and pass or get a really good result, then you, you can use that to add a bit of luck, which is what you'd expect from the title. Mercy is, Mercy is more involved. Mercy you can take and you either put it in your reserve for later or you put it on one of your active cards or your dashboard. So you'll have a card on either side. Can you see this? No, we're not going to be able to see this. Uh, no. Yes, if you bring it forward a little, if you bring okay, it forward, bring it, bring it forward a bit. to there. Get these out. So you'd have, you'd have a situation like this where, where you've got your two cards in play. Can you see that? Yeah, a little, little bit way. further forward. Okay, so you've got your, these are called active cards, these two, um, because they're, they're available for you to actually place uh, place dice on and use. So if you get a mercy cube, you the mercy, mercy cubes and luck cubes are the same size as the dice. They fit in the same slots and they sit on the same spaces here if you if you want them to. Uh, sorry, with, with mercy cubes sit on these spaces as well. So you get a mercy cube and imagine this is a white cube. I get this, I can either put it in my reserve and save it for later or I can put it directly on one of the slots on either my active cards or my dashboard. And that will mean as long as I leave at least one space left. So I can't cover the last thing, like I can't cover it there. But let's say I put it here. What this means is that is blanking out one of these requirements. Mm -hmm. So when I come to use this card to, for the action, I only have to pay for the other two. I don't have to pay for that. It just so it, it makes things cheaper. It is merciful. And can that only be used on dice faces, or can it be used to affect things like minus strength, minus clarity? It's minus only pleasure? dice. Okay. It's dice. It's it, saves you it saves you a, a resource. Yeah. But also the other thing it does, and this is its perhaps more powerful effect, and why you whilst you can use it on these on your dashboard, you will probably use it on one of your active cards. Is when you, let's say I placed it there, it was my turn. I rolled my dice and I got the other results I needed, so I paid for the paid for the action. I used that. Mm -hmm. When I when I uh, resolve this card, normally when you resolve an active card, it's discarded. If it's got a if it's got a mercy cube on it, you remove the mercy cube instead, and it goes back to the the pool, um, the supply. So you could double so you, fight. You basically move, get double. the the special. You get the active card twice. So if oh. you've got prudences. I, I move up one track oh, with yes. any one track. Nice. Then that's a really powerful. You basically, you can make a more a powerful card more powerful by getting it twice in a row, uh, and getting two goes out of it. And that's so that's the really important thing of Mercy Cube. The fact that it makes it slightly cheaper is is less important. Yeah. But when you're playing, let's say you we have a darkness uh, we have a darkness card. Let's say we we trigger an event's triggered. A shadow merges into Solomon Kane, and and we trigger this horrible event. And it's so horrible, we get given a mercy cube in recompense at the end of this horrible action. Or this horrible event. So we then decide, well, who, who, who wants it now? Mm -hmm. Has anybody got any really useful things out? Yeah. And then depending on what's happening on the board and what, what we're doing and whether we're in desperate straits or we're just about to win or whatever, you may decide that, you know, I've got this really great one. I, w I want it there. Or I want to put it in my reserve because I've got a card in my hand that's going down next turn yeah. that's going to be the thing to have it on. Or it may be that I've already got two things in my reserve and I can't put it in the reserve, mm -hmm. but I could put it on here. And so, and you, you start again. You've got another allocation resource, and there's only three of each in the game. Ooh, okay. Deliberately, yeah. they are rare things, and um, there's only three at once. But uh, you will go. You will use them very quickly if you have them because they're so good. Yeah. So go. that's Luck what they do. Luck and mercy. Okay, guys, well, look, we've answered all the questions. I'm going to wrap this up. There was one more question from Shark, which was, when does the new social stretch goals come at the moment? You've had the first batch of those. We may potentially look to do another batch. Um, obviously, we've added a bunch of art. We've added the digital wallpapers and the, the, Lou, uh, the Leo, the Leo, uh, Leo Town Crier Mini um, into the, the core boxes. So that's for everybody now, thanks to what you guys did. Um, we may indeed add some more later down the line, but we have a lot of stuff coming between now and the end of the campaign. So it's a matter of giving us a little bit of fresh air. 
Um, look, thank you everyone for all of your questions. We're going to finish up there. It's just gone one minute past nine here in the UK, so a nice how, few how hours. Does that mean we've been on two hours? Pretty much exactly so two we're, hours. We're, we're going to get the one minute video oh, at the end. The one minute video at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, thank you so, so much, guys. Like, we really do appreciate your time going through this. The rule book is now live on update 20, I think it was. Can you believe 20 updates? Yeah. And it's only please, been please do go on and I believe the comments are live. Yeah. Um, leave the comments are live. Go and, and tell us what you think. Yeah. So goodbye, Frank, Gabriel, Dothion, uh, Ian, Mark, Dave, Gibrano, Jimmy, Luis, Shark, Mark T. Jacob, goodbye, goodbye. Thank you everyone so much for being here, it's great. Um, Jack, do you want to do the honours as I um, sneak out? Which particular honours? Uh, the theme music for Adam's exit. <laughs> Shall we just use the secret can? That's now kind of messy, it's an awfully messy secret can. Maybe we'll just go with the... Stuff, well I can make it even more messy. I can make it even more messy okay. by putting well, all, there we go. all of this stuff Messy, there, Messy cam instead of all the music. Sorts of, all <laughs> sorts of... Da -dum, da -dum. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye everybody, <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Ba-dum-ba-dum-ba-dum.